section zero of cain this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org cain by jean toomer forward reading this book i had the vision of a land heretofore sunk in the mists of muteness suddenly rising up into the eminence of song innumerable books have been written about the south some good books have been written in the south this book is the south i do not mean that cain covers the south or is the south's full voice merely this a poet has arisen among our american youth who has known how to turn the essences and materials of his southland into the essences and materials of literature a poet has arisen in that land who writes not as a southerner not as a rebel against southerners not as a negro not as apologist or priest or critic who writes as a poet the fashioning of beauty is ever foremost in his inspiration not forcedly but simply and because these ultimate aspects of his world are to him more real than all its specific problems he has made songs and lovely stories of his land not of its yesterday but of its immediate life and that has been enough how rare this is will be clear to those who have followed with concern the struggle of the south toward literary expression and the particular trial of that portion of its folk whose skin is dark the gifted negro has been too often thwarted from becoming a poet because his world was forever forcing him to recollect that he was a negro the artist must lose such lesser identities in the great well of life the english poet is not forever protesting and recalling that he is english it is so natural and easy for him to be english that he can sing as a man the french novelist is not forever noting this is french it is so atmospheric for him to be french that he can devote himself to saying this is human this is an imperative condition for the creating of deep art the whole will and mind of the creator must go below the surfaces of race and this has been an almost impossible condition for the american negro to achieve forced every moment of his life into a specific and superficial plane of consciousness the first negative significance of cain is that this so natural and restrictive state of mind is completely lacking for tumor the southland is not a problem to be solved it is a field of loveliness to be sung the georgian negro is not a downtrodden soul to be uplifted he is material for gorgeous painting the segregated self-conscious brown belt of washington is not a topic to be discussed and exposed it is a subject of beauty and of drama worthy of creation in literary form it seems to me therefore that this is a first book in more ways than one it is a harbinger of the south's literary maturity of its emergence from the obsession put upon its minds by the unending racial crisis an obsession from which writers have made their indirect escape through sentimentalism exoticism polemic problem fiction and moral melodrama it marks the dawn of direct and unafraid creation and as the initial work of a man of twenty-seven it is the harbinger of a literary force of whose incalculable future i believe no reader of this book will be in doubt how typical is cain of the south's still virgin soil and of its pressing seeds and the book's chaos of verse tale drama its rhythmic rolling shift from lyrism to narrative from mystery to intimate pathos but read the book through and you will see a complex and significant form take substance from its chaos part one is the primitive and evanescent black world of georgia part two is the threshing and suffering brown world of washington lifted by opportunity and contact into the anguish of self-conscious struggle 
part three is georgia again the invasion into this black womb of the ferment seed the neurotic educated spiritually stirring negro as a broad form this is superb and the very looseness and unexpected waves of the book's parts make cain still more south still more of an aesthetic equivalent of the land what a land it is what an escalian beauty to its fateful problem those of you who love our south will find here some of your love those of you who know it not will perhaps begin to understand what a warm splendour is at last at dawn a feast of moon and men and barking hounds an orgy for some genius of the south with bloodshot eyes and cane-lipped scented mouth surprised in making folk-songs so in his still sometimes clumsy stride for tumour is finally a poet in prose the author gives you an inkling of his revelation an individual force wise enough to drink humbly at this great spring of his land such is the first impression of jean tumour but beyond this wisdom and this power which shows itself perhaps most splendidly in his complete freedom from the sense of persecution there rises a figure more significant the artist hard self-immolating the artist who is not interested in races whose domain is life the book's final part is no longer promise it is achievement it is no mere dawn it is a bit of the full morning these materials the ancient black man mute inaccessible and yet so mystically close to the new tumultuous members of his race the simple slave past the shredding negro present the iridescent passionate dream of the tomorrow are made and measured by a craftsman into an unforgettable music the notes of his counterpoint are particular the themes are of intimate connection with us americans but the result is that abstract and absolute thing called art waldo frank end of section zero section one of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain corintha her skin is like dusk on the eastern horizon oh can't you see it oh can't you see it her skin is like dusk on the eastern horizon when the sun goes down men had always wanted her this corintha even as a child corintha carrying beauty perfect as dusk when the sun goes down old men rode her hobby-horse upon their knees young men danced with her at frolics when they should have been dancing with their grown-up girls god grant us youth secretly prayed the old men the young fellows counted the time to pass before she would be old enough to mate with them this interest of the male who wishes to ripen a growing thing too soon could mean no good to her corintha at twelve was a wild flash that told the other folks just what it was to live at sunset when there was no wind and the pine smoke from over by the sawmill hugged the earth and you couldn't see more than a few feet in front her sudden darting past you was a bit of vivid colour like a blackbird that flashes in light with the other children one could hear some distance off their feet flopping in the two-inch dust corintha's running was a whir it had the sound of the red dust that sometimes makes a spiral in the road at dusk during the hush just after the sawmill had closed down and before any of the women had started their supper getting ready songs her voice high-pitched shrill would put one's ears to itching but no one ever thought to make her stop because of it she stoned the cows and beat her dog and fought the other children even the preacher who caught her at mischief told himself that she was as innocently lovely as a november cotton flower already rumours were out about her homes in georgia are most often built on the two-room plan in one you cook and eat in the other you sleep and there love goes on corintha had seen or heard perhaps she had felt her parents loving one could but imitate one's parents for to follow them was the way of god she played home with a small boy who was not afraid to do her bidding that started the whole thing 
old men could no longer ride her hobby horse upon their knees but young men counted faster her skin is like dusk oh can't you see it her skin is like dusk when the sun goes down corintha is a woman she who carries beauty perfect as dusk when the sun goes down she has been married many times old men remind her that a few years back they rode her hobby horse upon their knees corintha smiles and indulges them when she is in the mood for it she has contempt for them corintha is a woman young men run stills to make her money young men go to the big cities and run on the road young men go away to college they all want to bring her money these are the young men who thought that all they had to do was to count time but corintha is a woman and she has had a child a child fell out of her womb on to a bed of pine needles in the forest pine needles are smooth and sweet they are elastic to the feet of rabbits a sawmill was near by its pyramidal sawdust pile smouldered it is a year before one completely burns meanwhile the smoke curls up and hangs in odd wraiths about the trees curls up and spreads itself out over the valley weeks after corintha returned home the smoke was so heavy you tasted it in water someone made a song smoke is on the hills rise up smoke is on the hills oh rise and take my soul to jesus corintha is a woman men do not know that the soul of her was a growing thing ripened too soon they will bring their money they will die not having found it out corintha at twenty carrying beauty perfect as dusk when the sun goes down corintha her skin is like dusk on the eastern horizon oh can't you see it oh can't you see it her skin is like dusk on the eastern horizon when the sun goes down goes down end of section one section two of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain reapers black reapers with the sound of steel on stones are sharpening scythes i see them place the hones in their hip pockets as a thing that's done and start their silent swinging one by one black horses drive a mower through the weeds and there a field rat startled squealing bleeds his belly close to ground i see the blade blood-stained continue cutting weeds and shade end of section two section three of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain november cotton flower bow weevils coming and the winter's cold made cotton stalks look rusty seasons old and cotton scarce as any southern snow was vanishing the branch so pinched and slow failed in its function as the autumn rake drought fighting soil had caused the soil to take all water from the streams dead birds were found in wells a hundred feet below the ground such was the season when the flower bloomed old folks were startled and it soon assumed significance superstition saw something it had never seen before brown eyes that loved without a trace of fear beauty so sudden for that time of year end of section three section four of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain becky becky was the white woman who had two negro sons she's dead they've gone away the pines whispered to jesus 
the bible flaps its leaves with an aimless rustle on her mound becky had one negro son who gave it to her damn buck nigger said the white folks mouths she wouldn't tell common god-forsaken insane white shameless wench said the white folks mouths her eyes were sunken her neck stringy her breasts fallen till then taking their words they filled her like a bubble rising then she broke mouth setting in a twist that held her eyes harsh vacant staring who gave it to her low-down nigger with no self-respect said the black folks mouths she wouldn't tell poor catholic poor white crazy woman said the black folks mouths white folks and black folks built her cabin fed her and her growing baby prayed secretly to god who'd put his cross upon her and cast her out when the first was born the white folks said they'd have no more to do with her and black folks they too joined hands to cast her out the pines whispered to jesus the railroad boss said not to say he said it but she could live if she wanted to on the narrow strip of land between the railroad and the road john stone who owned the lumber and the bricks would have shot the man who told he gave the stuff to lonnie deacon who stole out there at night and built the cabin a single room hell down to earth oh fly away to jesus by a leaning chimney six trains each day rumbled past and shook the ground under her cabin fords and horse and mule drawn buggies went back and forth along the road no one ever saw her trainmen and passengers who'd heard about her threw out papers and food threw out little crumpled slips of paper scribbled with prayers as they passed her eye-shaped piece of sandy ground ground island eyes between the road and railroad track pushed up where a blue sheen god with listless eyes could look at it folks from the town took turns unknown of course to each other in bringing corn and meat and sweet potatoes even sometimes snuff oh thank ye jesus old david georgia grinding cane and boiling syrup never went her way without some sugar sap no one ever saw her the boy grew up and ran around when he was five years old as folks reckoned it hugh jordan saw him carrying a baby becky has another son was what the whole town knew but nothing was said for the part of man that says things to the likes of that had told itself that if there was a becky that becky now was dead the two boys grew sullen and cunning o oh, pines whispered to jesus tell him to come and press sweet jesus lips against their lips and eyes it seemed as though with those two big fellows there there could be no room for becky the part that prayed wondered if perhaps she'd really died and they had buried her no one dared ask they'd beat and cut a man who meant nothing at all in mentioning that they lived along the road white or colored no one knew and least of all themselves they drifted around from job to job we who had cast out their mother because of them could we take them in they answered black and white folks by shooting up two men and leaving town god damn the white folks god damn the niggers they shouted as they left town becky smoke curled up from her chimney she must be there trains passing shook the ground the ground shook the leaning chimney nobody noticed it a creepy feeling came over all who saw that thin wraith of smoke and felt the trembling of the ground folks began to take her food again they quit it soon because they had a fear becky if dead might be a hant and if alive it took some nerve even to mention it o oh, pines whispered to jesus it was sunday our congregation had been visiting at pulverton and were coming home there was no wind the autumn sun the bell from ebenezer church listless and heavy even the pines were stale sticky like the smell of food that makes you sick before we turned the bend of the road that would show us the becky cabin 
the horses stopped stock still pushed back their ears and nervously whinnied we urged then whipped them on quarter of a mile away thin smoke curled up from the leaning chimney o oh, pines whisper to jesus goose flesh came on my skin though there still was neither chill nor wind eyes left their sockets for the cabin ears burned and throbbed uncanny eclipse fear closed my mind we were just about to pass pines shout to jesus the ground trembled as a ghost train rumbled by the chimney fell into the cabin its thud was like a hollow report ages having passed since it went off barlow and i were pulled out of our seats dragged to the door that had swung open through the dust we saw the bricks in a mound upon the floor becky if she was there lay under them i thought i heard a groan barlow mumbling something through his bible on the pile no one has ever touched it somehow we got away my buggy was still on the road the last thing that i remember was whipping old dan like fury i remember nothing after that that is until i reached town and folks crowded round to get the true word of it becky was the white woman who had two negro sons she's dead they've gone away the pines whispered to jesus the bible flaps its leaves with an aimless rustle on her mound End of section four. Section five of Cain by Jean Toomer. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Face, hair, silver gray, like streams of stars, brows recurved canoes quivered by the ripples blown by pain her eyes mist of tears condensing on the flesh below and her channeled muscles are cluster grapes of sorrow purple in the evening sun nearly ripe for worms end of section five Section six of Cain by Jean Toomer. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Cotton Song. Come, brother, come, let's lift it. Come now, Hewitt, roll away. Shackles fall upon the judgment day. But let's not wait for it. God's body's got a soul. Bodies like to roll the soul can't blame god if we don't roll come brother roll roll cotton bales are the fleecy way weary sinners bare feet trod softly softly to the throne of god we ain't a gwine to wait until the judgment day nasser nasser hump eo ho eo ho roll away we ain't a gwine to wait until the judgment day god's body's got a soul bodies like to roll the soul can't blame god if we don't roll come brother roll roll end of section six section seven of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain karma wind is in the cane come along cane leaves swaying rusty with talk scratching choruses above the guineas squawk wind is in the cane come along karma in overalls and strong as any man stands behind the old brown mule driving the wagon home it bumps and groans and shakes as it crosses the railroad track she riding it easy i leave the men around the stove to follow her with my eyes down the red dust road nigger woman driving a georgia chariot down an old dust road dixie pike is what they call it maybe she feels my gaze perhaps she expects it anyway she turns 
the sun which has been slanting over her shoulder shoots primitive rockets into her mangrove gloomed yellow flower face hi yip god has left the moses people for the nigger Get yep using reins to slap the mule she disappears in a cloudy rumble at some indefinite point along the road the sun is hammered to a band of gold pine needles like mazda are brilliantly aglow no rain has come to take the rustle from the falling sweet gum leaves over in the forest across the swamp a sawmill blows its closing whistle smoke curls up marvellous web spun by the spider sawdust pile curls up and spreads itself pine high above the branch a single silver band along the eastern valley a black boy you are the most sleepiest man i ever seed sleeping beauty cradled on a gray mule guided by the hollow sound of cowbells heads for them through a rusty cotton field from down the railroad track the chug chug of a gas engine announces that the repair gang is coming home a girl in the yard of a whitewashed shack not much larger than the stack of worn ties piled before it sings her voice is loud echoes like rain sweep the valley dusk takes the polish from the rails lights twinkle in scattered houses from far away a sad strong song pungent and composite the smell of farmyards is the fragrance of the woman she does not sing her body is a song she is in the forest dancing torches flare juju men gree gree witch doctors torches go out the dixie pike has grown from a goat path in africa night foxy the bitch slicks back her ears and barks at the rising moon wind is in the corn come along corn leaves swaying rusty with talk scratching choruses above the guinea's squawk wind is in the corn come along karma's tale is the crudest melodrama her husband's in the gang and it's her fault he got there working with a contractor he was away most of the time she had others no one blames her for that he returned one day and hung around the town where he picked up weak old boasts and rumors bain accused her she denied he couldn't see that she was becoming hysterical he would have liked to take his fists and beat her who was strong as a man stronger words like corkscrews wormed to her strength it fizzled out grabbing a gun she rushed from the house and plunged across the road into a cane break there in quarter heaven shone the crescent moon bain was afraid to follow till he heard the gun go off then he wasted half an hour gathering the neighbor men they met in the road where lamplight showed tracks dissolving in the loose earth about the cane the search began moths flickered the lamps they put them out really because she still might be live enough to shoot time and space have no meaning in a cane field no more than the interminable stalks someone stumbled over her a cry went up from the road one would have thought that they were cornering a rabbit or a skunk it is difficult carrying dead weight through cane they placed her on the sofa a curious nosy somebody looked for the wound this fussing with her clothes aroused her her eyes were weak and pitiable for so strong a woman slowly then like a flash bain came to know that the shot she fired with averted head was aimed to whistle like a dying hornet through the cane twice deceived and one deception proved the other his head went off slashed one of the men who'd helped the man who stumbled over her now he's in the gang who was her husband should she not take others this karma strong as a man whose tale as i have told it is the crudest melodrama wind is in the cane come along cane leaves swing rusty with talk scratching courses above the guinea squawk wind is in the cane come along end of section seven
section eight of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain song of the sun pour o oh, pour that parting soul in song o oh, pour it in the sawdust glow of night into the velvet pine smoke air to-night and let the valley carry it along and let the valley carry it along o land and soil red soil and sweet gum tree so scant of grass so profligate of pines now just before an epoch's sun declines thy son in time i have returned to thee thy son i have in time returned to thee in time for though the sun is setting on a song-lit race of slaves it has not set though late o oh, soil it is not too late yet to catch thy plaintive soul leaving soon gone leaving to catch thy plaintive soul soon gone o oh, negro slaves dark purple ripened plums squeezed and bursting in the pine-wood air passing before they stripped the old tree bare one plum was saved for me one seed becomes an everlasting song a singing tree caroling softly souls of slavery what they were and what they are to me caroling softly souls of slavery end of section eight section nine of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain georgia dusk the sky lazily disdaining to pursue the setting sun too indolent to hold a lengthened tournament for flashing gold passively darkens for night's barbecue a feast of moon and men and barking hounds an orgy for some genius of the south with blood-hot eyes and cane-lipped scented mouth surprised in making folk-songs from soul sounds the sawmill blows its whistle buzz saws stop and silence breaks the bud of knoll and hill soft settling pollen where ploughed lands fulfil their early promise of a bumper crop smoke from the pyramidal sawdust pile curls up blue ghosts of trees tarrying low where only chips and stumps are left to show the solid proof of former domicile meanwhile the men with vestiges of pomp raise memories of king and caravan high priests an ostrich and a juju man go singing through the footpaths of the swamp their voices rise the pine trees are guitars strumming pine needles fall like sheets of rain their voices rise the chorus of the cane is caroling a vesper to the stars o oh, singers resinous and soft your songs above the sacred whisper of the pines give virgin lips to cornfield concubines bring dreams of christ to dusky cane lipped throngs end of section nine section ten of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain fern face flowed into her eyes flowed in soft cream foam and plaintive ripples in such a way that wherever your glance may momentarily have rested it immediately thereafter wavered in the direction of her eyes the soft suggestion of down slightly darkened like the shadow of a bird's wing might the creamy brown colour of her upper lip why after noticing it you sought her eyes i cannot tell you her nose was aquiline semitic if you have heard a jewish cantor sing 
if he has touched you and made your own sorrow seem trivial when compared with his you will know my feeling when i follow the curves of her profile like mobile rivers to their common delta they were strange eyes in this that they sought nothing that is nothing that was obvious and tangible and that one could see and they gave the impression that nothing was to be denied when a woman seeks you will have observed her eyes deny fern's eyes desired nothing that you could give her there was no reason why they should withhold men saw her eyes and fooled themselves fern's eyes said to them that she was easy when she was young a few men took her but got no joy from it and then once done they felt bound to her quite unlike their hit and run with other girls felt as though it would take them a lifetime to fulfil an obligation which they could find no name for they became attached to her and hungered after finding the barest trace of what she might desire as she grew up new men who came to town felt as almost every one did who ever saw her that they would not be denied men were everlastingly bringing her their bodies something inside of her got tired of them i guess for i am certain that for the life of her she could not tell why or how she began to turn them off a man in fever is no trifling thing to send away they began to leave her baffled and ashamed yet vowing to themselves that some day they would do some fine thing for her send her candy every week and not let her know whom it came from watch out for her wedding day and give her a magnificent something with no name on it buy a house and deed it to her rescue her from some unworthy fellow who had tricked her into marrying him as you know men are apt to idolize or fear that which they cannot understand especially if it be a woman she did not deny them yet the fact was that they were denied a sort of superstition crept into their consciousness of her being somehow above them being above them meant that she was not to be approached by any one she became a virgin now a virgin in a small southern town is by no means the usual thing if you will believe me that the sexes were made to mate is the practice of the south particularly black folks were made to mate and it is black folks whom i have been talking about thus far what white men thought of fern i can arrive at only by analogy they let her alone any one of course could see her could see her eyes if you walked up the dixie pike most any time of day you'd be most like to see her resting listless like on the railing of her porch back propped against a post head tilted a little forward because there was a nail in the porch post just where her head came which for some reason or other she never took the trouble to pull out her eyes if it were sunset rested idly where the sun molten and glorious was pouring down between the fringe of pines or maybe they gazed at the grey cabin on the knoll from which an evening folk-song was coming perhaps they followed a cow that had been turned loose to roam and feed on cotton stalks and corn leaves like as not they'd settle on some vague spot above the horizon though hardly a trace of wistfulness would come to them if it were dusk then they'd wait for the searchlight of the evening train which you could see miles up the track before it flared across the dixie pike close to her home wherever they looked you'd follow them and then waver back like her face the whole countryside seemed to flow into her eyes flowed into them with the soft listless cadence of george's south a young negro once was looking at her spellbound from the road a white man passing in a buggy had to flick him with his whip if he was to get by without running him over i first saw her on her porch i was passing with a fellow whose crusty numbness i was from the north and suspected of being prejudiced and stuck up was melting as he found me warm i asked him who she was that spurn was all that i could get from him some folks already thought that i was given to nosing around 
i let it go at that so far as questions were concerned but at first sight of her i felt as if i heard a jewish cantor sing as if his singing rose above the unheard chorus of a folk-song and i felt bound to her i too had my dreams something i would do for her i have knocked about from town to town too much not to know the futility of mere change of place besides picture if you can this cream-coloured solitary girl sitting at a tenement window looking down on the indifferent throngs of harlem better that she listened to folk songs at dusk in georgia you would say and so would i or suppose she came up north and married even a doctor or a lawyer say one who would be sure to get along that is make money you and i know who have had experience in such things that love is not a thing like prejudice which can be bettered by changes of town could men in washington chicago or new york more than the men of georgia bring her something left vacant by the bestowal of their bodies you and i who know men in these cities will have to say they could not see her out and out a prostitute along state street in chicago see her move into a southern town where white men are more aggressive see her become a white man's concubine something i must do for her there was myself what could i do for her talk of course push back the fringe of pines upon new horizons to what purpose and what for her myself men in her case seem to lose their selfishness i lost mine before i touched her i ask you friend it makes no difference if you sit in the pullman or the jim crow as the train crosses her road what thoughts would come to you that is after you'd finished with the thoughts that leap into men's minds at the sight of a pretty woman who will not deny them what thoughts would come to you had you seen her in a quick flash keen and intuitively as she sat there on her porch when your train thundered by would you have got off at the next station and come back for her to take her where would you have completely forgotten her as soon as you reached macon atlanta augusta pasadena madison chicago boston or new orleans would you tell your wife or sweetheart about a girl you saw your thoughts can help me and i would like to know something i would do for her one evening i walked up the pike on purpose and stopped to say hello some of her family were about but they moved away to make room for me damn if i knew how to begin would you mr and miss so-and-so people the weather the crops the new preacher the frolic the church benefit rabbit and possum hunting the new soft drink they had at old pap's store the schedule of the trains what kind of town macon was negroes migration north foal weevils syrup the bible to all these things she gave a yes sir or nas sir without further comment i began to wonder if perhaps my own emotional sensibility had played one of its tricks on me let's take a walk i at last ventured the suggestion coming after so long an isolation was novel enough i guess to surprise but it wasn't that something told me that men before me had said just that as a prelude to the offering of their bodies i tried to tell her with my eyes i think she understood the thing from her that made my throat catch vanished its passing left her visible in a way i thought but never seen we walked down the pike with people on all the porches gaping at us doesn't it make you mad she meant the row of petty gossiping people she meant the world through a cane break that was ripe for cutting the branch was reached under a sweet gum tree and where reddish leaves had dammed the creek a little we sat down dusk suggesting the almost imperceptible procession of giant trees settled with a purple haze about the cane i felt strange as i always do in georgia particularly at dusk i felt that things unseen to men were tangibly immediate it would not have surprised me had i had a vision people have them in georgia more often than you would suppose a black woman once saw the mother of christ and drew her in charcoal on the courthouse wall when one is on the soil of one's ancestors most anything can come to one from force of habit i suppose i held fern in my arms that is without at first noticing it then my mind came back to her her eyes unusually weird and open held me how god he flowed in as i've seen the countryside flow in seen men i must have done something what i don't know in the confusion of my emotion she sprang up rushed some distance from me 
fell to her knees and began swaying swaying her body was tortured with something it could not let out like boiling sap it flooded arms and fingers till she shook them as if they burned her it found her throat and spattered into articulately in plaintive convulsive sounds mingled with calls to christ jesus and then she sang brokenly a jewish cantor singing with a broken voice a child's voice uncertain or an old man's dusk hid her i could hear only her song it seemed to me as though she were pounding her head in anguish upon the ground i rushed to her she fainted in my arms there was talk about her fainting with me in the cane field and i got one or two ugly looks from town men who'd set themselves up to protect her in fact there was talk of making me leave town but they never did they kept a watch out for me though shortly after i came back north from the train window i saw her as i crossed her road saw her on her porch head tilted a little forward where the nail was eyes vaguely focused on the sunset saw her face flow into them the countryside and something that i call god flowing into them nothing ever really happened nothing ever came to fern not even i something i would do for her some fine unnamed thing and friend you she is still living i have reason to know her name against the chance that you might happen down that way is fernie may rosen End of section ten section eleven of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain nullo a spray of pine needles dipped in western horizon gold fell on to a path dry moulds of cow hoofs in the forest rabbits knew not of their falling nor did the forest catch a flame end of section eleven section twelve of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain evening song full moon rising on the waters of my heart lakes and moon and fires cloin tires holding her lips apart promises of slumber leaving shore to charm the moon miracle made vesper keeps cloin sleeps and i'll be sleeping soon cloin curled like the sleepy waters where the moon waves start radiant resplendently she gleams cloin dreams lips pressed against my heart end of section twelve section thirteen of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain esther one nine esther's hair falls in soft curls about her high-cheeked boned chalk-white face esther's hair would be beautiful if there were more gloss to it and if her face were not prematurely serious one would call it pretty her cheeks are too flat and dead for a girl of nine esther looks like a little white child starched frilled as she walks slowly from her home towards her father's grocery store she is about to turn in broad from maple street white and black men loafing on the corner hold no interest for her then a strange thing happens a clean muscled magnificent black-skinned negro whom she had heard her father mention as king barlow suddenly drops to his knees on a spot called the spittoon white men unaware of him continue squirting tobacco juice in his direction the saffron fluid splashes on his face 
his smooth black face begins to glisten and to shine soon people notice him and gather round his eyes are rapturous upon the heavens lips and nostrils quiver barlow is in a religious trance town folks know it they are not startled they are not afraid they gather round some beg boxes from the grocery stores from old mcgregor's notion shop a coffin case is pressed into use folks line the curbstones business men close shop and banker warpley parks his car close by silently all await the prophet's voice the sheriff a great florid fellow whose leggings never meet around his bulging calves swears in three deputies while ye can't never tell what a nigger like king barlow might be up to soda bottles five fingers full of shine are passed to those who want them a couple of stray dogs start a fight old goodloe's cow comes flopping up the street barlow still as an indian faker has not moved the town bell strikes six the sun slips in behind a heavy mass of horizon cloud the crowd is hushed and expectant barlow's under jaw relaxes and his lips begin to move jesus has been a whisperin strange words deep down oh weighed down deep deep in my ears hums of awe and of excitement he called me to his side and said get down on your knees beside me son i's gwine to whisper in your ears an old sister cries ah lord i's a gwine to whisper in your ears he said and i replied thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven ah lord amen amen and lord jesus whispered strange good words deep down oh way down deep deep in my ears and he said tell em till you feel your throat on fire i saw a vision i saw a man arise and he was big and black and powerful some one yells preach it preacher preach it but his head was caught up in the clouds and while he was a-gazin at the heavens heart filled up with the lord some little white ant biddies came and tied his feet to chains they led him to the coast they led him to the sea they led him across the ocean and they didn't set him free the old coast didn't miss him and the new coast wasn't free he left the old coast brothers to give birth to you and me o oh lord great god almighty to give birth to you and me barlow pauses old gray mothers are in tears fragments of melodies are being hummed white folks are touched and curiously awed off to themselves white and black preachers confer as to how best to rid themselves of the vagrant usurping fellow barlow looks as though he is struggling to continue people are hushed one can hear weevils work dusk is falling rapidly and the customary store lights fail to throw their feeble glow across the gray dust and flagging of the georgia town barlow rises to his full height he is immense to the people he assumes the outlines of his visioned african in a mighty voice he bellows brothers and sisters turn your faces to the sweet face of the lord and fill your hearts with glory open your eyes and see the dawn and of the morning light open your ears years afterwards esther was told that at that very moment a great heavy rumbling voice actually was heard that hosts of angels and of demons paraded up and down the streets all night that king barlow rode out of town astride a pitch-black bull that had a glowing gold ring in its nose and that old limp underwood who hated niggers woke up next morning to find that he held a black man in his arms this much is certain an inspired negress of wide reputation for being sanctified drew a portrait of a black madonna on the courthouse wall and king barlow left town he left his image indelibly upon the mind of esther he became the starting point of the only living patterns that her mind was to know two sixteen esther begins to dream the low evening sun sets the windows of mcgregor's notion shop aflame esther makes believe that they really are aflame 
the town fire department rushes madly down the road it ruthlessly shoves black and white idlers to one side it whoops it clangs it rescues from the second-story window a dimpled infant which she claims for her own how had she come by it she thinks of it immaculately it is a sin to think of it immaculately she must dream no more she must repent her sin another dream comes there is no fire department there are no heroic men the fire starts the loafers on the corner form a circle chew their tobacco faster and squirt juice just as fast as they can chew gallons on top of gallons they squirt upon the flames the air reeks with the stench of scorched tobacco juice women fat chunky negro women lean scrawny white women pull their skirts up above their heads and display the most ludicrous underclothes the women scoot in all directions from the danger zone she alone is left to take the baby in her arms but what a baby black singed woolly tobacco juice baby ugly as sin once held her breast miraculous thing its breath is sweet and its lips can nibble she loves it frantically her joy in it changes the town folks jeers to harmless jealousy and she is left alone twenty two esther's schooling is over she works behind the counter of her father's grocery store to keep the money in the family so he said she is learning to make distinctions between the business and the social worlds good business comes from remembering that the white folks don't divide the niggers esther be just as black as any man who has a silver dollar esther listlessly forgets that she is near white and that her father is the richest colored man in town black folk who drift in to buy lard and snuff and flour of her call her a sweet-natured accommodating girl she learns their names she forgets them she thinks about men i don't appeal to them i wonder why she recalls an affair she had with a little fair boy while still in school it had ended in her shame when he as much as told her that for sweetness he preferred a lollipop she remembers the salesman from the north who wanted to take her to the movies that first night he was in town she refused of course and he never came back having found out who she was she thinks of barlow barlow's image gives her a slightly stale thrill she spices it by telling herself his glories black magnetically so best cotton picker in the county in the state in the whole world for that matter best man with his fists best man with dice with a razor promoter of church benefits of colored fairs vagrant preacher lover of all the women for miles and miles around esther decides that she loves him and with the vague sense of life slipping by she resolves that she will tell him so whatever people say the next time he comes to town after the making of this resolution which becomes a sort of wedding cake for her to tuck beneath her pillow and go to sleep upon she sees nothing of barlow for five years her hair thins it looks like the dull silk on puny corn ears her face pales until it is the color of the gray dust that dances with dead cotton leaves three esther is twenty-seven esther sells lard and snuff and flour to vague black faces that drift in her store to ask for them her eyes hardly see the people to whom she gives change her body is lean and beaten she rests listlessly against the counter too weary to sit down from the street someone shouts king barlow has come back to town he passes her window driving a large new car cut out open he veers to the curb and steps out barlow has made money on cotton during the war he is as rich as any one esther suddenly is animate she goes to her door she sees him at a distance the centre of a group of credulous men she hears the deep bass rumble of his talk the sun swings low mcgregor's windows are aflame again pale flame a sharply dressed white girl passes by for a moment esther wishes that she might be like her not white she has no need for being that but sharp sporty with get-up about her barlow is connected with that wish she mustn't wish wishes only make you restless emptiness is a thing that grows by being moved i'll not think not wish just set my mind against it then the thought comes to her that those purposeless easy-going men will possess him if she doesn't 
purpose is not dead in her now that she comes to think of it that loose women will have their arms around him at nat bowles place to-night as if her veins are full of fired sun-bleached southern shanties a swift heat sweeps them dead dreams and a forgotten resolution are carried upward by the flames pale flames they shan't have him oh they shall not not if it kills me they shan't have him jerky a flutter she closes the store and starts home folks lazing on store window sills wonder what on earth can be the matter with jim crane's gal as she passes them come to remember she always was a little off a little crazy i reckon esther seeks her own room and locks the door her mind is a pink mesh bag filled with baby toes using the noise of the town clock striking twelve to cover the creaks of her departure esther slips into the quiet road the town her parents most every one is sound asleep this fact is a stable thing that comforts her after sundown a chill wind came up from the west it is still blowing but to her it is a steady settled thing like the cold she wants her mind to be like that solid contained and blank as a sheet of darkened ice she will not permit herself to notice the peculiar phosphorescent glitter of the sweet gum leaves their movement would excite her exciting too the recession of the dull familiar homes she knows so well she doesn't know them at all she closes her eyes and holds them tightly won't do her being aware that they are closed recalls her purpose she does not want to think of it she opens them she turns now into the deserted business street the corrugated iron canopies and mule and horse gnawed hitching posts bring her a strange composure ghosts of the commonplaces of her daily life take stride with her and become her companions and the echoes of her heels upon the flagging are rhythmically monotonous and soothing crossing the street at the corner of macgregor's notion shop she thinks that the windows are a dull flame only a fancy she walks faster than runs a turn into a side street brings her abruptly to nat bowles place the house is squat and dark it is always dark barlow is within quietly she opens the outside door and steps in she passes through a small room pauses before a flight of stairs down which people's voices muffled come the air is heavy with fresh tobacco smoke it makes her sick she wants to turn back she goes up the steps as if she were mounting to some great height her head spins she is violently dizzy blackness rushes to her eyes and then she finds that she is in a large room barlow is before her well i'm showly damned excuse me but what what brought you here lil milk-white gal you her voice sounds like a frightened child's that calls hornwood from some point miles away me yes you barlow this ain't the place fur ye this ain't the place fur ye i know i know but i've come for you for me for what she manages to look deep and straight into his eyes he is slow at understanding guffaws and giggles break out from all around the room a coarse woman's voice remarks so that's how the dicty niggers does it laughs must give em credit fo their gall esther doesn't hear barlow does his faculties are jogged she sees a smile ugly and repulsive to her working upward through thick liquor fumes barlow seems hideous the thought comes suddenly that conception with a drunken man must be a mighty sin she draws away frozen like a somnambulist she wheels around and walks stiffly to the stairs down them jeers and hoots pelter bluntly upon her back she steps out there is no air no street and the town has completely disappeared End of section 13. Section 14 of Cain by Jean Toomer. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Conversion. African guardian of souls, drunk with rum, feasting on a strange cassava, yielding to new words and a weak palabra of a white-faced sardonic god grins cries amen shouts hosanna 
end of section 14section 15 of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain portrait in georgia hair braided chestnut coiled like a lyncher's rope eyes faggots lips old scars or the first red blisters breath the last sweet scent of cane and her slim body white as the ash of black flesh after flame end of section fifteen section sixteen of cane by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain blood burning moon one up from the skeleton stone walls up from the rotting floorboards and the solid hand-hewn beams of oak of the pre-war cotton factory dusk came up from the dusk the full moon came glowing like a fired pine knot it illumined the great door and soft showered the negro shanties aligned along the single street of factory town the full moon in the great door was an omen negro women improvised songs against its spell louisa sang as she came over the crest of the hill from the white folks kitchen her skin was the color of oak leaves on young trees in fall her breasts firm and up pointed like ripe acorns and her singing had the low murmur of winds in fig trees bob stone younger son of the people she worked for loved her by the way the world reckons things he had won her by measure of that warm glow which came into her mind at thought of him he had won her tom burwell whom the whole town called big boy also loved her but working in the fields all day and far away from her gave him no chance to show it though often enough of evenings he had tried to somehow he never got along strong as he was with hands upon the axe or plough he found it difficult to hold her or so he thought but the fact was that he held her to factory town more firmly than he thought for his black balanced and pulled against the white of stone when she thought of them and her mind was vaguely upon them as she came over the crest of the hill coming from the white folks kitchen as she sang softly at the evil face of the full moon a strange stir was in her indolently she tried to fix upon bob or tom as the cause of it to meet bob in the canebrake as she was going to do an hour or so later was nothing new and tom's proposal which she felt on its way to her could be indefinitely put off separately there was no unusual significance to either one but for some reason they jumbled when her eyes gazed vacantly at the rising moon and from the jumble came the stir that was strangely within her her lips trembled the slow rhythm of her song grew adjutant and restless rusty black and tan spotted hounds lying in the dark corners of porches or prowling around back yards put their noses in the air and caught its tremor they began plaintively to yelp and howl chickens woke up and cackled intermittently all over the countryside dogs barked and roosters crowed 
as if heralding a weird dawn or some ungodly awakening the women sang lustily their songs were cotton wads to stop their ears louisa came down into factory town and sank wearily upon the step before her home the moon was rising towards a thick cloud bank which soon would hide it red nigger moon sinner blood burning moon sinner come out that factory door two up from the deep dusk of a cleared spot on the edge of the forest a mellow glow arose and spread fanwise into the low hanging heavens and all around the air was heavy with the scent of boiling cane a large pile of cane stalks lay like ribboned shadows upon the ground a mule harnessed to a pole trudged lazily round and round the pivot of the grinder beneath a swaying oil lamp a negro alternately whipped out at the mule and fed cane stalks to the grinder a fat boy waddled pails of fresh ground juice between the grinder and the boiling stove steam came from the copper boiling pan the scent of cane came from the copper pan and drenched the forest and the hill that sloped to factory town beneath its fragrance it drenched the men in circle seated around the stove some of them chewed at the white pulp of stalks but there was no need for them to if all they wanted was to taste the cane one tasted it in factory town and from factory town one could see the soft haze thrown by the glowing stove upon the low hanging heavens old david georgia stirred the thickening syrup with a long ladle and ever so often drew it off old david georgia tended his stove and told tales about the white folks about moon shining and cotton picking and about sweet nigger gals to the men who sat there about his stove to listen to him tom burwell chewed cane stalk and laughed with the others till some one mentioned louisa till some one said something about louisa and bob stone about the silk stocking she must have gotten from him blood ran up tom's neck hotter than the glow that fluttered from the stove he sprang up glared at the men and said she's my gal will manning laughed tom strode over to him yanked him up and knocked him to the ground several of manning's friends got up to fight for him tom whipped out a long knife and would have cut them to shreds if they hadn't ducked into the woods tom had had enough he nodded to old david georgia and swung down the path to factory town just then the dogs started barking and the roosters began to crow tom felt funny away from the fight away from the stove chill got to him he shivered he shuddered when he saw the full moon rising towards the cloud bank he who didn't give a goddamn for the fears of old women he forced his mind to fasten on louisa bob stone better not be he turned into the street and saw louisa sitting before her home he went towards her ambling touched the brim of a marvellously shaped spotted felt hat said he wanted to say something to her and then found that he didn't know what he had to say or if he did that he couldn't say it he shoved his big fists in his overalls grinned and started to move off you all want me tom that's what us wants show louisa well here i am and here i is but that ain't a helpin none all the same you wanted to say something i did that show but words is like the spots on dice no matter how ye fumbles em there's times when they just won't come i dunno why 
seems like the love i feels for you done stole my tongue i got it now we oui, louisa honey i oughtn't till ye i feel i oughtn't cause yo is young and goes to church and i has had other gals but louisa i sho do love ye lil gal i's watched ye from them first days when you all sat right here before yo door before the well and sang sometimes in a way that like to broke my heart i's carried ye with me in the the fields day after day and after that and show can plow when yo was there and i can pick cotton yes sir come near beatin barlow yesterday i show did yes sir and next year old stone'll trust me i'll have a farm my own my bales will buy yo what ye gets from white folks now silk stockings and purple dresses course i don't believe what some folks been whisperin as to how ye gets them things now why folks always did do for niggers what they likes and they just can't help a likin you louisa bob stone likes you course he does but not the way folks is a whisperin does he hun i don't know what you mean tom course you don't i's already cut two niggers had the hun tell em so niggers always trying to make something out of nothing and then besides white folks ain't up to them tricks so much nowadays god damn better not be least a wise not with you cause i wouldn't stand it if nah sir what would you do tom cut em just like i cut a nigger no tom i said i would and there ain't no mo to it but that ain't the talk for now sing honey louisa and while i'm listening to you i'll be making love tom took her hand in his against the tough thickness of his own hers felt soft and small his huge body slipped down to the step beside her the full moon sank upward into the deep purple of the cloud bank an old woman brought a lighted lamp and hung it on the common well whose bulky shadow squatted in the middle of the road opposite tom and louisa the old woman lifted the well lid took hold of the chain and began drawing up the heavy bucket as she did so she sang figures shifted restless like between lamp and window in the front rooms of the shanties shadows of the figures fought each other on the gray dust of the road figures raised the windows and joined the old woman in song louisa and tom the whole street singing red nigger moon sinner blood burning moon sinner come out that factory door three bob stone sauntered from his veranda out into the gloom of fir trees and magnolias the clear white of his skin paled and the flush of his cheeks turned purple as if to balance this outer change his mind became consciously a white man's he passed the house with its huge open hearth which in the days of slavery was the plantation cookery he saw louisa bent over that hearth he went in as a master should and took her direct honest bold none of this sneaking that he had to go through now the contrast was repulsive to him his family had lost ground hell no his family still owned the niggers practically damned if they did or he wouldn't have to duck around so what would they think if they knew his mother his sister he shouldn't mention them shouldn't think of them in this connection there in the dusk he blushed at doing so fellows about town were all right but how about his friends up north he could see them incredible repulsed they didn't know the thought first made him laugh then with their eyes still upon him he began to feel embarrassed he felt the need of explaining things to them explain hell they wouldn't understand and moreover who ever heard of a southerner getting on his knees to any yankee or any one no sir he was going to see louisa to-night and love her she was lovely in her way nigger way what way was that 
damned if he knew must know he'd known her long enough to know was there something about niggers that you couldn't know listening to them at church didn't tell you anything looking at them didn't tell you anything talking to them didn't tell you anything unless it was gossip unless they wanted to talk of course about farming and liquor and craps but those weren't nigger nigger was something more how much more something to be afraid of more hell no who ever heard of being afraid of a nigger tom burwell cartwell had told him that tom went with louisa after she reached home no sir no nigger had ever been with his girl he'd like to see one try some position for him to be in him bob stone of the old stone family in a scrap with a nigger over a nigger girl in the good old days ha those were the days his family had lost ground not so much though enough for him to have to cut through old lemon's canefield by way of the woods that he might meet her she was worth it beautiful nigger gal why nigger why not just gal no it was because she was nigger that he went to her sweet the scent of boiling cane came to him then he saw the rich glow of the stove he heard the voices of the men circled around it he was about to skirt the clearing when he heard his own name mentioned he stopped quivering leaning against a tree he listened bad nigger yes sir he show is one bad nigger when he gets started tom burwell's been on the gang three times fo cuttin in what do you think he's a-gwine to do to bob stone dunno yet he ain't found out when he does bay be ain't no tellin young stone ain't no quitter and i can tell you that blood of the old uns in his veins that's right he'll scrap show be gettin too hot for niggers round this away shut up nigger you don't know what you're talkin about bob stone's ears burned as though he had been holding them over the stove slizzin heat welled up within him his feet felt as if they rested on red-hot coals they stung him to quick movement he circled the fringe of the glowing not a twig cracked beneath his feet he reached the path that led to factory town plunged furiously down it halfway along a blindness within him veered him aside he crashed into the bordering cane brake cane leaves cut his face and lips he tasted blood he threw himself down and dug his fingers in the ground the earth was cool cane roots took the fever from his hands after a long while or so it seemed to him the thought came to him that it must be time to see louisa he got to his feet and walked calmly to their meeting-place no louisa tom burwell had her veins in his forehead bulged and distended saliva moistened the dried blood on his lips he bit down on his lips he tasted blood not his own blood tom burwell's blood bob drove through the cane and out again upon the road a hound swung down the path before him towards factory town bob couldn't see it the dog loped aside to let him pass bob's blind rushing made him stumble over it he fell with a thud that dazed him the hound yelp answering yelps came from all over the countryside chickens cackled roosters crowed heralding the bloodshot eyes of southern awakening singers in the town were silenced they shut their windows down palpitant between the rooster crows a chill hush settled upon the huddled forms of tom and louisa a figure rushed from the shadow and stood before them tom popped to his feet what ye want i'm bob stone yes sir and i'm tom burwell what ye want bob lunged at him tom sidestepped caught him by the shoulder and flung him to the ground straddled him let me up yes sir but watch your doin's bob stone a few dark figures drawn by the sound of scuffle stood about them bob sprang to his feet fight like a man tom burwell and i'll lick ye again he lunged tom sidestepped and flung him to the ground straddled him get off me you goddamn nigger you you show sure has started something now get up tom yanked him up and began hammering at him each blow sounded as if it smashed into a precious irreplaceable soft something beneath them bob staggered back he reached in his pocket and whipped out a knife that's my game show blue flash a steel blade slashed across bob stone's throat he had a sweetish sick feeling blood began to flow then he felt a sharp twitch of pain he let his knife drop he slapped one hand against his neck he pressed the other on top of his head as if to hold it down he groaned he turned and staggered towards the crest of the hill in the direction of white town negroes who had seen the fight slunk into their homes and blew the lamps out 
louisa dazed hysterical refused to go indoors she slipped crumbled her body loosely propped against the woodwork of the well tom burwell leaned against it he seemed rooted there bob reached broad street white men rushed up to him he collapsed in their arms tom burwell white men like ants upon a forage rushed about except for the taut hum of their moving all was silent shotguns revolvers rope kerosene torches two high-powered cars with glaring searchlights they came together the taut hum rose to a low roar then nothing could be heard but the flop of their feet in the thick dust of the road the moving body of their silence preceded them over the crest of the hill into factory town it flattened the negroes beneath it it rolled to the wall of the factory where it stopped tom knew that they were coming he couldn't move and then he saw the searchlights of the two cars glaring down on him a quick shock went through him he stiffened he started to run a yell went up from the mob tom wheeled about and faced them they poured down on him they swarmed a large man with dead white face and flabby cheeks came to him and almost jabbed a gun-barrel through his guts hands behind you nigger tom's wrists were bound the big man shoved him to the well burn him over it and when the word work caved in his body would drop to the bottom two deaths for a goddamn nigger louisa was driven back the mob pushed in its pressure its momentum was too great drag him to the factory wood and stakes already there tom moved in the direction indicated but they had to drag him they reached the great door too many to get in there the mob divided and flowed around the walls to either side the big man shoved him through the door the mob pressed in from the sides taut humming no words a stake was sunk into the ground rotting floor boards piled around it kerosene poured on the rotting floor boards tom bound to the stake his breast was bare nails scratches let little lines of blood trickle down and mat into the hair his face his eyes were set and stony except for irregular breathing one would have thought him already dead torches were flung into the pile a great flare muffled in black smoke shot upward the mob yelled the mob was silent now tom could be seen within the flames only his head erect lean like a blackened stone stench of burning flesh soaked the air tom's eyes popped his head settled downward the mob yelled its yell echoed against the skeleton stone walls and sounded like a hundred yells like a hundred mobs yelling its yell flooded against the thick front wall and fell back ghost of a yell slipped through the flames and out of the great door of the factory it fluttered like a dying thing down the single street a factory town louisa upon the step before her home did not hear it but her eyes opened slowly they saw the full moon glowing in the great door the full moon an evil thing an omen soft showering the homes of folks she knew where were they these people she'd sing and perhaps they'd come out and join her perhaps tom burwell would come at any rate the full moon in the great door was an omen which she must sing to red nigger moon sinner blood burning moon sinner come out that factory door end of section sixteen section seventeen of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain seventh street money burns the pocket pocket hurts bootleggers in silken shirts ballooned zooming cadillacs whizzing whizzing down the street car tracks seventh street is a bastard of prohibition and the war a crude boned soft-skinned wedge of nigger life breathing its loafer air jazz songs in love thrusting unconscious rhythms black reddish blood into the white and whitewashed wood of washington stale soggy wood of washington wedges rust in soggy wood split it in two again shred it the sun wedges are brilliant in the sun ribbons of wet wood dry and blow away black reddish blood pouring for crude boned soft-skinned life who set you flowing 
blood-suckers of the war would spin in a frenzy of, of dizziness if they drank your blood prohibition would put a stop to it who set you flowing white and white wash disappear in blood who set you flowing flowing down the smooth asphalt of seventh street in shanties brick office buildings theatres drug stores restaurants and cabarets eddying on the corner swirling like a blood-red smoke up where the buzzards fly in heaven god would not dare to suck black red blood a nigger god he would duck his head in shame and call for the judgment day who set you flowing money burns the pocket pocket hurts bootleggers in silken shirts ballooned zooming cadillacs whizzing whizzing down the streetcar tracks end of section seventeen section eighteen of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain robert robert wears a house like a monstrous diver's helmet on his head his legs are banty bowed and shaky because as a child he had rickets he is way down rods of the house like antennae of a dead thing stuffed prop up in the air he is way down he is sinking his house is a dead thing that weights him down he is sinking as a diver would sink in mud should the water be drawn off life is a murky wiggling microscopic water that compresses him compresses his helmet and would crush it the minute that he pulled his head out he has to keep it in life is water that is being drawn off brother life is water that is being drawn off brother life is water that is being drawn off the dead house is stuffed the stuffing is alive it is sinful to draw one's head out of live stuffing in a dead house the propped up antennae would cave in and the stuffing be strewn shredded life pulp in the water it is sinful to have one's own head crushed robert is an upright man whose legs are banty bowed and shaky because as a child he had rickets the earth is round heaven is a sphere that surrounds it sink where you will god is a red cross man with a dredge and a respiration pump who's waiting for you at the opposite periphery god built the house he blew his breath into its stuffing it is good to die obeying him who can do these things a feudal something like the dead house wraps the live stuffing of the question how long before the water will be drawn off robert does not care like most men who wear monstrous helmets the pressure it exerts is enough to convince him of its practical infinity and he cares not two straws as to whether or not he will ever see his wife and children again many a time he's seen them drown in his dreams and has kicked about joyously in the mud for days after one thing about him goes straight to the heart he has an adam's apple which strains sometimes as if he were painfully gulping great globules of air air floating shredded life pulp it is a sad thing to see a banty bowed shaky ricket legged man straining the raw insides of his throat against smooth air holding furtive thoughts about the glory of pulp heads strewn in water he is way down down mud coining to his banty knees almost hides them soon people will be looking at him and calling him a strong man no doubt he is for one who has had rickets let's give it to him let's call him great when the water shall have been all
drawn off let's build a monument and set it in the ooze where he goes down a monument of hewn oak carved in nigger heads let's open our throats brother and sing deep river when he goes down brother robert is sinking let's open our throats brother let's sing deep river when he goes down end of section eighteen section nineteen of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain a v for a long while she was nothing more to me than one of those skirted beings whom boys at a certain age disdain to play with just how i came to love her timidly and with secret blushes i do not know but that i did was brought home to me one night the first night that ned wore his long pants us fellers were seated on the curb before an apartment house where she had gone in the young trees had not outgrown their boxes then v street was lined with them when our legs grew cramped and stiff from the cold of the stone we'd stand around a box and whittle it i like to think now that there was a hidden purpose in the way we hacked them with our knives i like to feel that something deep in me responded to the trees the young trees that whinnied like colts impatient to be let free on the particular night i have in mind we were waiting for the top floor light to go out we wanted to see avy leave the flat this night she stayed longer than usual and gave us a chance to complete the plans of how we were going to stone and beat that feller on the top floor out of town ned especially had it in for him he was about to throw a brick up at the window when at last the room went dark some minutes passed then avy as unconcerned as if she had been paying an old maid aunt a visit came out i don't remember what she had on and all that sort of thing but i do know that i turned hot as bare pavements in the summer time at ned's boast hell bet i could get her too if you little niggers weren't always spying and crabbing everything i didn't say a word to him it wasn't my way then i just stood there like the others and something like a fuse burned up inside of me she never noticed us but swung along lazy along lazy and easy as anything we sauntered to the corner and watched her till her door banged to ned repeated what he'd said i didn't seem to care sitting around old mushhead's bread box the discussion began hang if i can see how she gets away with it doc started ned knew of course there was nothing he didn't know when it came to women he dilated on the emotional needs of girls said they weren't much different from men in that respect and concluded with a solemn avowal it does em good none of us liked ned much we all talked dirt but it was the way he said it and then too a couple of the fellows had sisters and had caught ned playing with them but there was no disputing the superiority of his smutty wisdom bubbs sanborn whose mother was friendly with avy's had overheard the old ladies talking avy's mother's aunt her he said we thought that only natural and began to guess at what would happen some one said she'd married that feller on the top floor ned called that a lie because avy was going to marry nobody but him we had our doubts about that but we did agree that she'd soon leave school and marry some one the gang broke up and i went home picturing myself as married nothing i did seemed able to change avy's indifference to me i played basketball and when i'd make a long clean shot she'd clap with the others louder than they i thought i'd meet her on the street and there'd be no difference in the way she said hello she never took the trouble to call me by my name on the days for drill i'd let my voice down a tone and call for a complicated manoeuvre when i saw her coming she'd smile appreciation but it was an impersonal smile never for me it was on a summer excursion down to riverview that she first seemed to take me into account the day had been spent riding merry-go-rounds scenic railways and shoot the shoots we had been in swimming and we had danced i was a crack swimmer then she didn't know how i told her up and showed her how to kick her legs and draw her arms 
of course she didn't learn in one day but she thanked me for bothering with her i was also somewhat of a dancer and i had already noticed that love can start on a dance floor we danced but though i held her tightly in my arms she was way away that college fellow who lived on the top floor was somewhere making money for the next year i imagined that she was thinking wishing for him ned was along he treated her until his money gave out she went with another fellow ned got sore one by one the boys money gave out she left them and they got sore every one of them but me got sore this is the reason i guess why i had her to myself on the top deck of the jane mosley that night as we puffed up the potomac coming home the moon was brilliant the air was sweet like clover and every now and then a salt tang a stale drift of seaweed it was not my mind's fault if it went romancing i should have taken her in my arms the minute we were stowed in that old lifeboat i dallied dreaming she took me in hers and i could feel by the touch of it that it wasn't a man-to-woman love it made me restless i felt chagrined i didn't know what it was but i did know that i couldn't handle it she ran her fingers through my hair and kissed my forehead i itched to break through her tenderness to passion i wanted her to take me in her arms as i knew she had that college fellow i wanted her to love me passionately as she did him i gave her one burning kiss then she laid me in her lap as if i were a child helpless i got sore when she started to hum a lullaby she wouldn't let me go i talked i knew damn well that i could beat her at that her eyes were soft and misty the curves of her lips were wistful and her smile seemed indulgent of the irrelevance of my remarks i gave up at last and let her love me silently in her own way the moon was brilliant the air was sweet like clover and every now and then a salt tang a stale drift of seaweed the next time i came close to her was the following summer at harper's ferry we were sitting on a flat projecting rock they give the name of lover's leap some one is supposed to have jumped off it the river is about six hundred feet beneath a railroad track runs up the valley and curves out of sight where part of the mountain rock had to be blasted away to make room for it the engines of this valley have a whistle the echoes of which sound like iterated gasps and sobs i always think of them as crude music from the soul of Abe we sat there holding hands our palms were soft and warm against each other our fingers were not tight she would not let them be she would not let me twist them i wanted to talk to explain what i meant to her Avy was as silent as those great trees whose tops we looked down upon she has always been like that at least to me i had the notion that if i really wanted to i could do with her just what i pleased like one can strip a tree i did kiss her i even let my hands cup her breasts when i was through she'd seek my hand and hold it till my pulse cooled down evening after evening we sat there i tried to get her to talk about that college fellow she never would there was no set time to go home none of my family had come down and as for her she didn't give a hang about them the general gossips could hardly say more than they had the boarding-house porch was always deserted when we returned no one saw us enter so the time was set conveniently for scandal this worried me a little for i thought it might keep avy from getting an appointment in the schools she didn't care she had finished normal school they could give her a job if they wanted to as time went on her indifference to things began to pique me i was ambitious i left the ferry earlier than she did i was going off to college the more i thought of it the more i resented yes hell that's what it was her downright laziness sloppy indolence there was no excuse for a healthy girl taking life so easy hell she was no better than a cow i was certain that she was a cow when i felt an utter in a wisconsin stock judging class among those energetic swedes or whatever they are i decided to forget her for two years i thought i did when i'd come home for the summer she'd be away and before she returned i'd be gone we never wrote she was too damn lazy for that but what a bluff i put up about forgetting her the girls up that way at least the ones i knew haven't got the stuff they don't know how to love giving themselves completely was tame beside just the holding of avy's hand one day i received a note from her the writing i decided was slovenly she wrote on a torn bit of notebook paper the envelope had a faint perfume that i remembered a single line told me that she had lost her school and was going away i comforted myself with the reflection that shame held no pain for one so indolent as she nevertheless i left wisconsin that year for good washington had seemingly forgotten her 
i hunted ned between curses i caught his opinion of her she was no better than a whore i saw her mother on the street the same old pinch-backed jerky gated creature that i'd always known perhaps five years past the business of hunting a job or something or other had bruised my vanity so that i could recognize it i felt old avia my real relation to her i thought i came to know i wanted to see her i had been told that she was in new york as i had no money i hiked and bummed my way there i got work in a shipyard and walked the streets at night hoping to meet her failing in this i saved enough to pay my fare back home one evening in early june just at the time when dusk is most lovely on the eastern horizon i saw avy indolent as ever leaning on the arm of a man strolling under the recently lit arc lights of u street she had almost passed before she recognized me she showed no surprise the puff over her eyes had grown heavier the eyes themselves were still sleepy large and beautiful i had almost concluded indifferent you look older was what she said i wanted to convince her that i was so i asked her to walk with me the man whom she was with and whom she never took the trouble to introduce at a nod from her hailed a taxi and drove away that gave me a notion of what she had been used to her dress was of some fine costly stuff i suggested the park and then added that the grass might stain her skirt let it get stained she said for where it came from there are others i have a spot in soldiers home to which i always go when i want the simple beauty of another's soul robins spring about the lawn all day they leave their footprints in the grass i imagine that the grass at night smells sweet and fresh because of them the ground is high washington lies below its light spreads like a blush against the darkened sky against the soft dusk sky of washington and when the wind is from the south soil of my homeland falls like a fertile shower upon the lean streets of the city upon my hill in soldiers home i know the policeman who watches the place of nights when i go there alone i talk to him i tell him i come there to find the truth that people bury in their hearts i tell him that i do not come there with a girl to do the thing he's paid to watch out for i look deep in his eyes when i say these things and he believes me he comes over to see who it is on the grass i say hello to him he greets me in the same way and goes off searching for other black splotches upon the lawn avy and i went there a band in one of the buildings a fair distance off was playing a march i wished they would stop their playing was like a tin spoon in one's mouth i wanted the howard glee club to sing deep river from the road to sing deep river deep river from the road other than the first comments avy had been silent i started to hum a folk tune she slipped her hand in mine pillowed her head as best she could upon my arm kissed the hand that she was holding and listened or so i thought to what i had to say i traced my development from the early days up to the present time the phase in which i could understand her i described her own nature and temperament told how they needed a larger life for their expression how incapable washington was of understanding that need how it could not meet it i pointed out that in lieu of proper channels her emotions had overflowed into paths that dissipated them i talked beautifully i thought about an art that would be born an art that would open the way for women the likes of her i asked her to hope and build up an inner life against the coming of that day i recited some of my own things to her i sang with a strange quiver in my voice a promised song and then i began to wonder why her hand had not once returned a single pressure my old-time feeling about her laziness came back i spoke sharply my policeman friend passed by i said hello to him as he went away i began to visualize certain possibilities an immediate and urgent passion swept over me then i looked at avy her heavy eyes were closed her breathing was as faint and regular as a child's in slumber my passion died i was afraid to move lest i disturb her hours and hours i guess it was she lay there my body grew numb i shivered i coughed i wanted to get up and whittle at the boxes of young trees i withdrew my hand i raised her head to waken her she did not stir i got up and walked around i found my policeman friend and talked to him we both came up and bent over her he said it would be all right for her to stay there just so long as she got away before the workmen came at dawn a blanket was borrowed from a neighbor house 
i sat beside her through the night i saw the dawn steal over washington the capitol dome looked like a gray ghost ship drifting in from sea avy's face was pale and her eyes were heavy she did not have the gray crimson splashed beauty of the dawn i hated to wake her orphan woman End of section 19section 20 of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain beehive within this black hive tonight there swarm a million bees bees passing in and out the moon bees escaping out the moon bees returning through the moon silver bees intently buzzing silver honey dripping from the swarm of bees earth is a waxen cell of the world comb and i a drone lying on my back lipping honey getting drunk with silver honey wish that i might fly out past the moon and curl for ever in some far-off farmyard flower End of section twenty. section twenty one of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain storm ending thunder blossoms gorgeously above our heads great hollow bell-like flowers rumbling in the wind stretching clappers to strike our ears full-lipped flowers bitten by the sun bleeding rain dripping rain like golden honey and the sweet earth flying from the thunder end of section twenty one section twenty two of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain theatre lights of nigger alleys of pool rooms and restaurants and near beer saloons soaks into the walls of howard theatre and sets them throbbing jazz songs black-skinned they dance and shout above the tick and trill of white-walled buildings at night they open doors to people who come in to stamp their feet and shout at night road shows volley songs into the mass heart of black people songs soak the walls and seep out to the nigger life of alleys and near beer saloons of the poodle dog and black bear cabarets afternoons the house is dark and the walls are sleeping singers until rehearsal begins or until john comes within them then they start throbbing to a subtle syncopation and the space dark air grows softly luminous john is the manager's brother he is seated at the centre of the theatre just before rehearsal light streaks down upon him from a window high above one half his face is orange in it one half his face is in shadow the soft glow of the house rushes to and compacts about the shaft of light john's mind coincides with the shaft of light thoughts rush to and compact about it life of the house and of the slowly awakening stage swirls to the body of john and thrills it john's body is separate from the thoughts that pack his mind stage light soft as if they shine through clear pink fingers beneath them hid by the shadow of a set doris other chorus girls drift in john feels them in the mass and as if his own body were the mass heart of a black audience listening to them singing he wants to stamp his feet and shout his mind contained above desires of his body singles the girls out and tries to trace origins and plot destinies 
a pianist slips into the pit and improvises jazz the walls awake arms of the girls and their limbs which jazz jazz by lifting up their tight street skirts they set free jab the air and clog the floor in rhythm to the music lift your skirts baby and talk to papa crude individualized and yet monotonous john soon the director will herd you my full-lipped distant beauties and tame you and blunt your sharp thrusts and loosely suggestive movements appropriate to broadway oh dance soon the audience will paint your dusk faces white and call you beautiful oh dance soon i oh dance i'd like girls laugh and shout sing discordant snatches of other jazz songs whirl with loose passion into the arms of passing showmen john too thick too easy too monotonous her whom i'd love i'd leave before she knew that i was with her her which oh dance i'd like to girls dance and sing men clap the walls sing and press inward they press the men and girls they press john towards a centre of physical ecstasy go to it baby fan yourself and feed your papa put nobody lied and take when they said i cried over you no lie the glitter and colour of stacked scenes the gilt and brass and crimson of the house converge towards a centre of physical ecstasy john's feet and torso and his blood press in he wills thought to rid his mind of passion all right girls alaska miss reynolds please the director wants to get the rehearsal through with the girls line up john sees the front row dancing ponies the rest are in shadow the leading lady fits loosely in the front black life monotonous one two three music starts the song is somewhere where it will not strain the leading lady's throat the dance is somewhere where it will not strain the girls above the staleness one dancer throws herself into it doris john sees her her hair crisp curled is bobbed bushy black hair bobbing about her lemon-coloured face her lips are curiously full and very red her limbs in silk purple stockings are lovely john feels them desires her holds off john stage door johnny chorus girl no that would be all right dicty educated stuck-up show girl yep her suspicion would be stronger than her passion it wouldn't work keep her loveliness let her go doris sees john and knows that he is looking at her her own glowing is too rich a thing to let her feel the slimness of his diluted passion who's that she asks her dancing partner the manager's brother dicty nothing doin hun doris tosses her head and dances for him until she feels she has him then withdrawing disdainfully she flirts with the director doris nothing doin how come ain't i as good as him couldn't i have got an education if i'd wanted one don't i know respectable folks lots of em in philadelphia and new york and chicago ain't i had men as good as him better doctors and lawyers what's a manager's brother anyhow two steps back and two steps front say mame where do you get that stuff what's you mean doris if you two girls can't listen to what i'm telling you i know where i can get some who can't now listen mame go to hell you black bastard doris what's eatin at him anyway now follow me in this you girls it's three counts to the right three counts to the left and then you shimmy john and then you shimmy i'll bet she can some good cabaret with rooms upstairs and what in hell do you think you'd get from it you're going wrong here's right get her to herself christ but how she'd bore you after the first five minutes not if you get her right she wouldn't touch her i mean to herself in some room perhaps some cheap dingy bedroom hell no can't be done but the point is brother john it can be done get her to herself somewhere anywhere go down in yourself and she'd be calling you all sorts of asses 
while you were in the process of going down hold em bud can't be done let her go dance and i'll love you and keep her loveliness all right now chicken chaser doris and girls where's doris i told you to stay on that stage didn't i well now that's enough all right all right there professor all right one two three doris swings to the front the line of girls four deep blurs within the shadow of suspended scenes doris wants to dance the director feels that and steps to one side he smiles and picks her for a leading lady one of these days odd ends of stage men emerge from the wings and stare and clap a crap game in the alley suddenly ends black faces crowd the rear stage doors the girls catching joy from doors whip up within the footlights glow they forget set steps they find their own the director forgets to ball them out doris dances john her head bobs to broadway dance from yourself dance oh just a little more doris eyes burn across the space of seats to him doris i bet he can love hell he can't love he's too skinny his lips are too skinny you wouldn't love me anyway only for that but i'd get a pair of silk stockings out of it red silk i got purple cut it kid you can't win him to respect you that away he wouldn't anyway maybe he would maybe he'd love i've heard him say that men who look like him what does he look like will marry if they love or will you love me and give me kids and a home and everything i'd like to make your nest and honest hun i wouldn't run out on you you will if i make you just watch me doris dances she forgets her tricks she dances glorious songs are the muscles of her limbs and her singing is of cane break loves and mangrove feastings the walls press in singing flesh of a throbbing body they press close to john and doris they close them in john's heart beats tensely against her dancing body walls press his mind within his heart and then the shaft of light goes out the window high above him john's mind sweeps up to follow it mind pulls him upward into dream doris dances john dreams doris is dressed in a loose black gown splashed with lemon ribbons her feet taper long and slim from trim ankles she waits for him just inside the stage door john collar and tie colorful and flaring walks towards the stage door there are no trees in the alley but his feet feel as though they step on autumn leaves whose rustle has been pressed out of them by the passing of a million satin slippers the air is sweet with roasting chestnuts sweet with bonfires of old leaves john's melancholy is a deep thing that seals all senses but his eyes and makes him whole doris knows that he is coming just at the right moment she steps from the door as if there were no door her face is tinted like the autumn alley of old flowers or of a southern cane-field her perfume glorious doris so his eyes speak and their sadness is too deep for sweet untruth she barely touches his arm they glide off with footfalls softened on the leaves the old leaves powdered by a million satin slippers they are in a room john knows nothing of it only that the flesh and blood of doris are its walls singing walls lights soft as if they shine through clear pink fingers soft lights and warm john reaches for a manuscript of his and reads doris who has no eyes has eyes to understand him he comes to a dancing scene the scene is doris she dances doris dances glorious doris doris whirls whirls dances doris dances the pianist crashes a bumper chord the whole stage claps doris flushed looks quick at john his whole face is in shadow she seeks for her dance in it she finds it a dead thing in the shadow which is his dream she rushes from the stage falls down the steps into her dressing-room pulls her hair her eyes over a flood of tears stare at the whitewashed ceiling smell of dry paste and paint and soiled clothing her pal comes in doris flings herself into the old safe arms and cries bitterly i told you nothing doin is what mame says to comfort her End 
of section twenty two section twenty three of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain her lips are copper wire whisper of yellow globes gleaming on lamp-posts that sway like bootleg liquor drinkers in the fog and let your breath be moist against me like bright beads on yellow globes telephone the power-house that the main wires are insulate her words play softly up and down dewy corridors of billboards then with your tongue remove the tape and press your lips to mine till they are incandescent end of section twenty three section twenty four of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain section twenty four calling jesus her soul is like a little thrust-tailed dog that follows her whimpering she is large enough i know to find a warm spot for it but each night when she comes home and closes the big outside storm door the little dog is left in the vestibule filled with chills till morning some one echoed jesus soft as a cotton bowl brushed against the milk-pod cheek of christ will steal in and cover it that it need not shiver and carry it to her where she sleeps upon clean hay cut in her dreams when you meet her in the daytime on the streets the little dog keeps coming nothing happens at first and then when she has forgotten the streets and alleys and the large house where she goes to bed of nights a soft thing like fur begins to rub your limbs and you hear a low scared voice lonely calling and you know that a cool something nozzles moisture in your palms sensitive things like nostrils quiver her breath comes sweet as honeysuckle whose pistols bear the life of coming song and her eyes carry to where builders find no need for vestibules for swinging on iron hinges storm doors her soul is like a little thrust-tailed dog that follows her whimpering i have seen it tagging on behind her up streets where chestnut trees flowered where dusty asphalt had been freshly sprinkled with clean water up alleys where niggers sat on low doorsteps before tumbled shanties and sang and loved at night when she comes home the little dog is left in the vestibule nosing the crack beneath the big storm door filled with chills till morning some one echoed jesus soft as the bare feet of christ moving across bales of southern cotton will steal in and cover it that it need not shiver and carry it to her where she sleeps cradled in dream fluted cane End of section twenty four section twenty five of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain box seat one houses are shy girls whose eyes shine reticently upon the dusk body of the street upon the gleaming limbs and asphalt torso of a dreaming nigger shake your curled wool blossoms nigger open your liver lips to the lean white spring stir the root life of a withered people call them from their houses and teach them to dream dark swaying forms of negroes are street songs that woo virginal houses dan moore walks southward on thirteenth street the low limbs of budding chestnut trees recede above his head chestnut buds and blossoms or wool he walks upon the eyes of houses faintly touch him as he passes them soft girl eyes they set him singing girl eyes within him widen upward to promised faces floating away they dally wistfully over the dusk body of the street 
come on dan moore come on dan sings his voice is a little hoarse it cracks he strains to produce tones in keeping with the house's loveliness can't be done he whistles his notes are shrill they hurt him negroes open gates and go indoors perfectly dan thinks of the house he's going to of the girl lips flesh notes of a forgotten song plead with him dan turns into a side street opens an iron gate bangs it to mounts the steps and searches for the bell funny he can't find it he fumbles around the thought comes to him that some one passing by might see him and not understand might think that he is trying to sneak to break in dan break in get an axe and smash in smash in their faces i'll show em break into an engine house steal a thousand horsepower fire truck smash in with the truck i'll show em grab an axe and brain em cut em up jack the ripper baboon from the zoo and then the cops come no i ain't a baboon i ain't jack the ripper i'm a poor man out of work take your hands off me you bull-necked bears look into my eyes i'm dan moore i was born in a cane field the hands of jesus touched me i'm come to a sick world to heal it only the other day a dope fiend brushed against me don't laugh you mighty juicy meat hook men give me your fingers and i will peel them as if they were ripe bananas some one might think he is trying to break in he'd better knock his knuckles a raw bone against the thick glass door he waits no one comes perhaps they haven't heard him he raps again this time harder he waits no one comes some one is surely in he fancies that he sees their shadows on the glass shadows of gorillas perhaps they saw him coming and don't want to let him in he knocks the tension of his arms makes the glass rattle hurried steps come towards him the door opens please you might break the glass the bell oh mr moore i thought it must be some stranger how do you do come in won't you muriel yes i'll call her take your things off won't you and have a seat in the parlor muriel will be right down muriel oh muriel mr moore to see you she'll be right down you'll pardon me won't you so glad to see you her eyes are weak they're bluish and watery from reading newspapers the blue is steel it gimlets dan while her mouth flaps amiably to him dan nothing for you to see old muscle head dare i show you if i did delirium would furnish you headlines for a month now look here that's enough go long woman say some nasty thing and i'll kill you huh better damned sight not ta ta mrs pribby mrs pribby retreats to the rear of the house she takes up a newspaper there is a sharp click as she fits in her chair and draws it to the table the click is metallic like the sound of a bolt being shot into place dan's eyes sting sinking into a soft couch he closes them the house contracts about him it is a sharp-edged massed metallic house bolted about mrs pribby bolted to the endless rows of metal houses mrs pribby's house the rows of houses belong to other mrs pribby's no wonder he couldn't sing to them dan what's muriel doing here god what a place for her what's she doing putting her stockings on in the bathroom come out of there dan moore people must have their privacy peeping tums i'll never peep i'll listen i like to listen dan goes to the wall and places his ear against it a passing street car and something vibrant from the earth sends a rumble to him that rumble comes from the earth's decor it is the mutter of powerful underground races dan has a picture of all the people rushing to put their ears against walls to listen to it the next world savior is coming up that way coming up a continent sinks down the new world christ will need consummate skill to walk upon the waters where huge bubbles burst thuds of muriel coming down dan turns to the piano and glances through a stack of jazz music sheets jijibo jijibo hello dan stranger what brought you here muriel comes in shakes hands and then clicks into a high-armed seat under the orange glow of a floor lamp her face is fleshy it would tend to coarseness but for the fresh fragrant something which is the life of it her hair like an indian's but more curly and brushed and vagrant her nostrils flare the flushed ginger of her cheeks is touched orange by the shower of colour from the lamp well you haven't told me you haven't answered my question stranger what brought you here then feels the pressure of the house of the rear room of the rows of houses shift to muriel he is light he loves her he is doubly heavy don't know muriel wanted to see you wanted to talk to you to see you and tell you that i know what you've been through what pain the last few months must have been 
let's don't mention that but why not muriel i please but muriel life is full of things like that one grows strong and beautiful in facing them what else is life i don't know dan and i don't believe i care what's the use let's talk about something else i hear there's a good show at the lincoln this week yes so harry was telling me going to-night dan starts to rise i didn't know i don't want to keep you it's all right you don't have to go till bernice comes and she won't be here till eight i'm all dressed i'll let you know thanks silence the rustle of a newspaper being turned comes from the rear room muriel shame about dan something awfully good and fine about him but he don't fit in in where me dan i could love you if i tried i don't have to try i do oh dan don't you know i do timid lover brave talker that you are what's the good of all you know if you don't know that i won't let myself i mrs privy who reads newspapers all night won't what has she got to do with me she is me somehow no she's not yes she is she is the town and the town won't let me love you dan don't you know you could make it let me if you would why won't you you're selfish i'm not strong enough to bucket you're too selfish to bucket for me i wish you'd go you irritate me dan please go what are you doing now dan same old thing muriel nothing as the world would have it living as i look at things living as much as i can without but you can't live without money dan why don't you get a good job and settle down dan same old line shoot it at me sister hell of a note this loving business for ten minutes of it you've got to stand the torture of an intolerable heaviness and a hundred platitudes well damn it shoot on to what my dear rustling newspapers you mustn't say that dan it isn't right mrs privy has been awfully good to me dare say she has what's that got to do with it oh dan you're so unconsiderate and selfish all you think of is yourself i think of you too much i mean you ought to work more and think less that's the best way to get along muscle heads get along muriel there is more to you than that sometimes i think there is dan but i don't know i've tried i've tried to do something with myself something real and beautiful i mean but what's the good of trying i've tried to make people every one i come in contact with happy dan looks at her directly her animalism still unconquered by zoo restrictions and keeper taboo stirs him passion tilts upward bringing with it the elements of an old desire muriel's lips become the flesh notes of a futile plaintive longing dan's impulse to direct her is its fresh life happy muriel no not happy your aim is wrong there is no such thing as happiness life bends joy and pain beauty and ugliness in such a way that no one may isolate them no one should want to perfect joy or perfect pain with no contrasting element to define them would mean a monotony of consciousness would mean death not happy muriel say that you have tried to make them create say that you have used your own capacity for life to cradle them to start them upward flowing or if you can't say that you have then say that you will my talking to you will make you aware of your power to do so say that you will love that you will give yourself in love to you dan dan's consciousness crudely swerves into passions they flare up in his eyes they set up quivers in his abdomen he is suddenly over tense and nervous muriel the newspaper rustles in the rear room muriel dan rises his arms stretched towards her his fingers and his palms pink in the lamplight are glowing irons muriel's chair is close and stiff about her the house the rows of houses locked about her chair dan's fingers and arms are fire to melt and bars to wrench and force and pry her arms hang loose her hands are hot and moist dan takes them he slips to his knees before her dan you mustn't muriel dan really you mustn't no dan no oh come muriel must i Shh, dan please get up please mrs Bribby is right in the next room she'll hear you she may come in don't dan she'll see you well then let's go out i can't let go dan oh won't you please let go muriel tries to pull her hands away dan tightens his grip he feels the strength of his fingers his muscles are tight and strong he stands up thrusts out his chest muriel shrinks from him dan becomes aware of his crude absurdity his lips curl his passion chills he has an obstinate desire to possess her muriel i love you i want you whatever the world of privy says damn your privy who is she to dictate my love i've stood enough of her enough of you come here muriel's mouth works in and out her eyes flash and waggle she wrenches her hands loose and forces them against his breast to keep him off dan grabs her wrists 
wedges in between her arms her face is close to him it is hot and blue and moist ugly come here now don't dan oh don't what are you killing what's weak in both of us and a whole litter of pribbies for once in your life you're going to face what's real by god a sharp rap on the newspaper in the rear room cuts between them the rap is like cool thick glass between them dan is hot on one side muriel hot on the other they straighten gaze fearfully at one another neither moves a clock in the rear room in the rear room the rear room strikes eight eight slow cool sounds bernice muriel fastens on her image she smooths her dress she adjusts her skirt she becomes prim and cool rising she skirts dan as if to keep the glass between them dan gyrating nervously above the easy swing of his limbs follows her to the parlor door muriel retreats before him till she reaches the landing of the steps that lead upstairs she smiles at him dan sees his face in the hall mirror he runs his fingers through his hair reaches for his hat and coat and puts them on he moves towards muriel muriel steps backward up one step dan's jaw shoots out muriel jerks her arm in warning of mrs pribby she gasps and turns and starts to run noise of a chair scraping as mrs pribby rises from it ratchets down the hall dan stops he makes a wry face wheels round goes out and slams the door two people come in slowly mutter laughs flutter wish a wash i've changed my work clothes and fill vacant seats of lincoln theatre muriel leading bernice who is a cross between a washerwoman and a blue blood lady a washer blue a washer lady wanders down the right aisle to the lower front box muriel has on an orange dress its color would clash with the crimson box draperies its color would contradict the sweet rose smile her face is bathed in should she take her coat off she'll keep it on pale purple shadows rest on the plains of her cheeks deep purple comes from her thick shocked hair orange of the dress goes well with these muriel presses her coat down from around her shoulders teachers are not supposed to have bobbed hair she'll keep her hat on she takes the first chair and indicates that bernice is to take the one directly behind her seated thus her eyes are level with and near to the face of an imaginary man upon the stage to speak to bernie she must turn when she does the audience is square upon her people come in slowly for my sunday go to meeting dress o oh, glory god o oh, shout amen and fill vacant seats of lincoln theatre each one is a bolt that shoots into a slot and is locked there suppose the lord should ask where was moses when the light went out suppose gabriel should blow his trumpet the seats are slots the seats are bolted houses the mass grows denser its weight at first is impalpable upon the box and muriel begins to feel it she props her arm against the brass box rail to ward it off silly these people are friends of hers a parent of a child she teaches an old school friend she smiles at them they return her courtesy and she is free to chat with bernie bernie's tongue started runs on and on o oh, washer blue o oh, washer lady muriel never see dan again he makes me feel queer starts things he doesn't finish upsets me i'm not upset i'm perfectly calm i'm going to enjoy the show good show i've had some show this damn tame thing oh dan won't see dan again not alone have mrs pribby come in she was in keep dan out if i love him can i keep him out well then i don't love him now he's out who is that coming in blind as a bat ding bat looks like dan he mustn't see me silly he can't reach me he won't dare come in here he'd put his head down like a goring bull and charge me he'd trample them he'd gore he'd rape bernie he won't dare come in here bernie who was that who just came in i haven't my glasses a friend of yours a good friend so i hear mr daniel moore lord oh he's no friend of mine no i hear he is well he isn't dan is ushered down the aisle he has to squeeze past the knees of seated people to reach his own seat he treads on a man's corns the man grumbles and shoves them off he shrivels close beside a portly negress whose huge rolls of flesh meet about the bones of seat arms a soil so fragrance comes from her through the cement floor her strong roots sink down they spread under the asphalt streets dreaming the streets roll over on their bellies and suck their glossy health from them 
her strong roots sink down and spread under the river and disappear in blood lines that waver south her roots shoot down dan's hands follow them roots throb dan's heart beats violently he places his palms upon the earth to cool them earth throbs dan's heart beats violently he sees all the people in the house rush to the walls to listen to the rumble a new world christ is coming up dan comes up he is startled the eyes of the woman don't belong to her they look at him unpleasantly from either aisle bolted masses press him he doesn't fit the mass grows adjutant for an instant dan's and muriel's eyes meet his weight there slides the weight on her she braces an arm against the brass rail and turns her head away muriel dan fool dear dan what did you want to follow me here for oh can't you ever do anything right must you always pain me and make me hate you i do hate you i wish some one would come in with a horse whip and lash you out i wish some one would drag you up a back alley and bring you with the whip but muriel glances at her wrist watch quarter of nine bernie what time have you eight forty time to begin oh look muriel that woman with the plume doesn't she look good they say she's going with oh what's his name you know too much powder i can see it from here here's the orchestra now oh fine jim clem at the piano the men fill the pit instruments run the scale in tune the saxophone moans and throws a fit jim clem poised over the piano is ready to begin his head nods forward opening crash the house snaps dark the curtain recedes upward from the blush of the footlights jazz overture is over the first act is on dan old stuff muriel bored must be but she'll smile and she'll clap do what you're bid you she slave look at her sweet tame woman in a brass box seat clap smile fawn clap do what you're bid drag me in with you dirty me prop me in your brass box seat i'm there am i not because of you he slave slave of a woman who is a slave i'm a damn sight worse than you are i sing your praises beauty i exalt thee o muriel a slave thou art greater than all freedom because i love thee dan fidgets and disturbs his neighbors his neighbors glare at him he glares back without seeing them the man whose corns have been trod upon speaks to him keep quiet can't you mister other people have paid their money besides yourself to see the show the man's face is a blur about two sullen liquid things that are his eyes the eyes dissolve in the surrounding vagueness dan suddenly feels that the man is an enemy whom he has long been looking for dan bristles glares furiously at the man all right all right then look at the show i'm not stopping you Shh! from someone in the rear dan turns around it's that man there who started everything i didn't say a thing to him until he tried to start something what have i got to do with whether he has paid his money or not that's the manager's business do i look like the manager Shh! you're right Shh! don't tell me to Shh! tell him that man there he started everything if what he wanted was to start a fight why didn't he say so the man leans forward better be quiet sonny i ain't said a thing about fight yet it's a good thing you haven't Shh. dan grips himself another act is on dwarfs dressed like prize-fighters foreheads bulging like boxing gloves are led upon the stage they are going to fight for the heavyweight championship gruesome dan glances at muriel he imagines that she shudders his mind curves back into himself and picks up tail ends of experiences his eyes are open mechanically the dwarfs pound and bruise and bleed each other on his eyeballs dan ah but she was some baby and not vulgar either funny how some women can do those things muriel dancing like that hell she rolled and wobbled her buttocks rocked she pulled up her dress and showed her pink drawers baby and then she caught my eyes don't know what my eyes had in them yes i do god don't i though sometimes i think dan moore that your eyes could burn clean burn clean burn clean the gong rings the dwarfs set to they spar grotesquely playfully until one lands a stiff blow this makes the other sore he commences slugging a real scrap is on time the dwarfs go to their corners and are sponged and fanned off gloves bulge from their wrists their wrists are necks for the tight face gloves the fellow to the right lets his eyes roam over the audience he sights muriel he grins dan those silly women arguing feminism here's what i should have said to them 
it should be clear to you women that the proposition must be stated thus me horizontally above her action perfect strokes downward oblique hence man dominates because of limitation or so it shall be until women learn their stuff so framed the proposition is a mental filler dentist i want gold teeth it should become cherished of the technical intellect i hereby offer it to posterity as one of the important machine age designs p s it should be noted that because it is an achievement of this age its growth and hence its causes up to the point of maturity antedate machinery airy the gong rings no fooling this time the dwarfs set to they clinch the referee parts them one swings a cruel upper cut and knocks the other down a huge head hits the floor pop the house roars the fighter groggy scrambles up the referee whispers to the contenders not to fight so hard they ignore him they charge their heads jab like boxing gloves they kick and spit and bite they pound each other furiously muriel pounds the house pounds cut lips bloody noses the referee asks for the gong time the house roars the dwarfs bow are made to bow the house once more the dwarfs are led from the stage dan strange i never really noticed him before been sitting there for years born a slave slavery not so long ago he'll die in his chair swing low sweet chariot jesus will come and roll him down the river jordan oh come along moses you'll get lost stretch out your rod and come across let my people go old man knows every one who passes the corners saw the first horse cars the first oldsmobile and he was born in slavery i did see his eyes never miss eyes but they were bloodshot and watery it hurt to look at them it hurts to look in most people's eyes he saw grant and lincoln he saw walt old man did you see walt whitman did you see walt whitman strange force that drew me to him and i went up to see the woman thought i saw crazy i told him to look into the heavens he did and smiled i asked him if he knew what that rumbling is that comes up from the ground christ what a stroke that was and the jabbering idiots crowding around and the crossing cop leaving his job to come over and wheel him away the house applauds the house once more the dwarfs are led back but no encore must give the house something the attendant comes out and announces that mr barry the champion will sing one of his own songs for your approval mr barry grins at muriel as he wobbles from the wing he holds a fresh white rose and a small mirror he wipes blood from his nose he signals jim clem the orchestra starts a sentimental love song mr barry sings first to one girl and then another in the audience he holds the mirror in such a way that it flashes in the face of each one he sings to the light swings around dan i'm going to reach up and grab the girders of this building and pull them down the crash will be a signal hid by the smoke and dust dan moore will arise in his right hand will be a dynamo in his left a god's face that will flash white light from ebony i'll grab a girder and swing it like a walking stick lightning will flash i'll grab its black knob and swing it like a crippled cane lightning someone's flashing someone's flashing who in hell is flashing that mirror take it off me god damn you dan's eyes are half blinded he moves his head the light follows he hears the audience laugh he hears the orchestra a man with a high-pitched sentimental voice is singing dan sees the dwarf along the mirror flash the song comes dan ducks his head the audience roars the light swings around to muriel dan looks muriel is too close mr barry covers his mirror he sings to her she shrinks away nausea she clutches the brass box rail she moves to face away the audience is square upon her its eyes smile its hands itch to clap muriel turns to the dwarf and forces a smile at him with a showy blare of orchestration the song comes to its close mr barry bows he offers muriel the rose first having kissed it blood of his battered lips is a vivid stain upon its petals mr barry offers muriel the rose the house applauds muriel flinches back the dwarf steps forward diffident threatening hate pops from his eyes and crackles like a brittle heat about the box the thick hide of his face is drawn in tortured wrinkles above his eyes the bulging tight skinned brow dan looks at it it grows calm and massive it grows profound it is a thing of wisdom and tenderness of suffering and beauty dan looks down the eyes are calm and luminous words come from them arms of the audience reach out grab muriel and hold her there claps her steel fingers that manacle her wrists and move them forward to acceptance bernie leans forward and whispers it's all right go on take it words form in the eyes of the dwarf do not shrink do not be afraid of me 
jesus see how my eyes look at you the son of god i too was made in his image was once i give you the rose muriel tight in her revulsion sees black and daintily reaches for the offering as her hand touches it dan springs up in his seat and shouts jesus was once a leper dan steps down he is as cool as a green stem that has just shed its flower rows of gaping faces strain towards him they are distant and beneath him impalpable squeezing out dan again treads upon the cornfoot man the man shoves him watch where you're going mister crazy or no you ain't going to walk over me watch where you're going there dan turns and serenely tweaks the fellow's nose the man jumps up dan is jammed against a seat back a slight swift anger flicks him his fist hooks the other's jaw now you have started something ain't no man living can hit me and get away with it come on on the outside the house tumultuously stirring grabs its wraps and follows the men the man leads dan up a black alley the alley air is thick and moist with smells of garbage and wet trash in the morning singing niggers will drive by and ring their gongs heavy with the scent of rancid flowers and with the scent of fight the crowd pressing forward is a hollow roar eyes of houses soft girl eyes glow reticently upon the hubbub and blink out the man stops takes off his hat and coat dan having forgotten him keeps going on end of section twenty five section twenty six of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain prayer my body is opaque to the soul driven of the spirit long have i sought to temper it unto the spirit's longing but my mind too is opaque to the soul a closed lid is my soul's flesh i o spirits of whom my soul is but a little finger directed to the lid of its flesh i i am weak with much giving i am weak with the desire to give more how strong a thing is the little finger so weak that i have confused the body with the soul and the body with its little finger how frail is the little finger my voice could not carry to you did you dwell in stars o oh, spirits of whom my soul is but a little finger end of section twenty six section twenty seven of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain harvest song i am a reaper whose muscles set at sundown all my oats are cradled but i am too chilled and too fatigued to bind them and i hunger i crack a grain between my teeth i do not taste it i have been in the fields all day my throat is dry i hunger my eyes are caked with dust of oat fields at a harvest time i am a blind man who stares across the hills seeking stacked fields of other harvesters it would be good to see them crooked split and iron-ringed handles of the scythes it would be good to see them dust caked and blind i hunger dusk is a strange feared sheath their blades are dulled in my throat is dry and should i call a cracked grain like the oats eo ho i fear to call what should they hear me and offer me their grain oats or wheat or corn i have been in the fields all day i fear i could not taste it i fear knowledge of my hunger my ears are caked with dust of oat fields at harvest time i am a deaf man who strains to hear the calls of other harvesters whose throats are also dry 
it would be good to hear their songs reapers of the sweet stalked cane cutters of the corn even though their throats cracked and the strangeness of their voices deafened me i hunger my throat is dry now that the sun has set and i am chilled i fear to call e o ho my brothers i am a reaper e o ho all my oats are cradled but i am too fatigued to bind them and i hunger i crack a grain it has no taste to it my throat is dry o oh, my brothers i beat my palms still soft against the stubble of my harvesting you beat your soft palms too my pain is sweet sweeter than the oats or wheat or corn it will not bring me knowledge of my hunger end of section twenty seven section twenty eight of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain bona and paul one on the school gymnasium floor young men and women are drilling they are going to be teachers and go out into the world thud thud and give precision to the movements of sick people who all their lives have been drilling one man is out of step in step the teacher glares at him a girl in bloomer seated on a mat in the corner because she has told the director that she is sick sees that the footfalls of the men are rhythmical and syncopated the dance of his blue trousered limbs thrills her bona he is a candle that dances in a grove swung with pale balloons columns of the drillers thud towards her he is in the front row he is in no row at all bona can look close at him his red-brown face bona he is a harvest moon he is an autumn leaf he is a nigger bona but don't all the dorm girls say so and don't you when you are sane say so that's why i love oh nonsense you have never loved a man who didn't first love you besides columns thud away from her come to a halt in line formation rigid the period bell rings and the teacher dismisses them a group collects around paul they are choosing sides for basketball girls against boys paul has his he is lumbering up beneath the basket bona runs to the girl captain and asks to be chosen the girls fuss the director comes to quiet them he hears what bona wants but miss hale you were excused so i was mr boynton but you can play basketball but you are too sick to drill if you wish to put it that way she swings away from him to the girl captain helen i want to play and you must let me this is the first time i've asked and i don't see why that's just it bona we have our team well team or no team i want to play and that's all there is to it she snatches the ball from helen's hands and charges down the floor helen shrugs one of the weaker girls says that she'll drop out helen accepts this the team is formed the whistle blows the game starts bona in centre is jumping against paul he plays with her out jumps her makes a quick pass gets a quick return and shoots a goal from the middle of the floor bona burns crimson she fights and tries to guard him one of her teammates advises her not to play so hard paul shoots his second goal bona begins to feel a little dizzy and all in she drives on almost hugs paul to guard him near the basket he attempts to shoot and bona lunges into his body and tries to beat his arms his elbow going up gives her a sharp crack on the jaw she whirls he catches her her body stiffens then becomes strangely vibrant and bursts to a swift life within her anger he is about to give way before her hatred when a new passion flares at him and makes his stomach fall 
bona squeezes him he suddenly feels stifled and wonders why in hell the ring of silly gaping faces that's caked about him doesn't make way and give him air he has a swift illusion that it is himself who has been struck he looks at bona were were they seem to be human distortions spinning tensely in a fog spinning dizzy spinning bona jerks herself free flushes a startling crimson breaks through the bewildered teams and rushes from the hall two paul is in his room of two windows outside the south side l track cuts them in two bona is one window one window paul hurtling loop jammed l trains throw them in swift shadow paul goes to his gray slanting roofs of houses are tinted lavender in the setting sun paul follows the sun over the stockyards where a fresh stench is just arising across wheat lands that are still waving above their stubble into the sun paul follows the sun to a pine matted hillock in georgia he sees the slanting roofs of gray unpainted cabins tinted lavender a negress chants a lullaby beneath the mate eyes of a southern planter her breasts are ample for the suckling of a song she weans it and sends it curiously weaving among lush melodies of cane and corn paul follows the sun into himself in chicago he is at bona's window with his own glow he looks through a dark pane paul's roommate comes in say paul i've got a date for you come on shake a leg will you his blond hair is combed slick his vest is snug about him he is like the electric light which he snaps on what do you say paul get a wiggle on come on we haven't got much time by the time we eat and dress and everything his bustling concentrates on the brushing of his hair art what in hell's getting into paul of late anyway christ but he's getting moony it's his blood dark blood moony doesn't get anywhere unless you boost it you've got to keep it going say paul or it'll go to sleep on you dark blood nigger that's what those jealous shehens say not bona though or she from the south wouldn't want me to fix a date for him and her hell of a thing that paul's dark you've got to always be answering questions say paul for christ's sake leave that window can't you what's it art hell i've told you about fifty times got a date for you come on with who art he didn't used to ask now he does getting up in the air getting funny here's your hat want a smoke paul here i've got a match now come on and i'll tell you all about it on the way to supper paul he's going to life this time no doubt of that quit your kidding some day dear art i'm going to kick the living slats out of you and you won't know what i've done it for and your slats will bring forth life beautiful woman pure food restaurant bring me some soup with a lot of crackers understand and then a roast beef dinner same for you eh paul now as i was saying you've got a swell chance with her and she's game best proof she don't give a damn what the dorm girls say about you and her in the gym or about the funny looks that boynton gives her or about what they say about well hell you know paul and say paul she's a sweetheart tall not puffy and pretty more serious and deep the kind you like these days and they say she's got a car and say she's on fire but you know all about that she got helen to fix it up with me the four of us remember the last party crimson gardens boy paul's eyes take on a light that art can settle in three art has on his patent leather pumps and fancy vest a loose fall coat is swung across his arm his face has been massaged and over a close shave powdered it is a healthy pink the blue of evening tints a purple pallor art is happy and confident in the good looks that his mirror gave him bubbling over with a joy he must spend now if the night is to contain it all his bubbles too are curiously tinted purple as paul watches them paul contrary to what he had thought he would be like is cool like the dusk and like the dusk detached his dark face is a floating shade in evening's shadow he sees art curiously art is a purple fluid carbon charged that effervesces besides him 
he loves art but is it not queer this pale purple facsimile of a red-blooded norwegian friend of his perhaps for some reason white skins are not supposed to live at night surely enough nights would transform them fantastically or kill them and their red passion night paled that too and made it moony moony that's what art thought of him bona didn't even in the daytime bona would she be pale impossible not that red glow but the conviction did not set his emotion flowing come right in won't you the young ladies will be right down oh mr carlstrom do play something for us while you are waiting we just love to listen to your music you play so well houses and dorm sitting-rooms are places where white faces seclude themselves at night there is a reason art sat on the piano and simply tore it down jazz the picture of our poets hung perilously paul i've got to get the kid to play that stuff for me in the daytime might be different more himself more nigger different there is curious though the girls come in art stops playing and almost immediately takes up a petty quarrel where he had last left it with helen bona black-haired curled staccato sharply contrasting with helen's puffy yellow holds paul's hand she squeezes it her own emotion supplements the return pressure and then for no tangible reason her spirits drop without them she is nervous and slightly afraid she resents this paul's eyes are critical she resents paul she flares at him she flares to poise and security shall we be on our way yes bona certainly the boulevard is sleek in asphalt and with arc lights and limousines aglow dry leaves scamper behind the whir of cars the scent of exploded gasoline that mingles with them is faintly sweet mellow stone mansions over shadow clabbered homes which now resemble negro shanties in some southern alley bona and paul and art and helen move along an island-like far-stretching strip of leaf-soft ground above them worlds of shadow plains and solid silently moving as if on one of these paul looks down on bona no doubt of it her face is pale she is talking her words have no feel to them one sees them they are pink petals that fall upon velvet cloth bona is soft and pale and beautiful paul tell me something about yourself or would you rather wait i'll tell you anything you'd like to know not what i want to know paul what you want to tell me you have the beauty of a gem fathoms under sea i feel that but i don't want to be i want to be near you perhaps i will be if i tell you something paul i love you the sea casts up its jewel into his hands and burns them furiously to tuck her arm under his and hold her hand will ease the burn what can i say to you brave dear woman i can't talk love love is a dry grain in my mouth unless it is wet with kisses you would dare right here on the boulevard before arthur and helen before myself i dare here then bona in the slim shadow of a tree trunk pulls paul to her suddenly she stiffens stops but you have not said you love me i can't yet bona ach you never will you're cold cold bona colored cold wrong somewhere she hurries and catches up with art and helen four crimson gardens hurrah so one feels people university of chicago students members of the stock exchange a large negro in crimson uniform who guards the door had watched them enter had leaned towards each other over ash smeared tablecloths and highballs and whispered what is he a spaniard an indian an italian a mexican a hindu or a japanese art had at first fidgeted under their stares what are you looking at you goddamn pack of owl-eyed hyenas but soon settled into his fuss with helen and forgot them a strange thing happened to paul suddenly he knew that he was apart from the people around him apart from the pain which they had unconsciously caused suddenly he knew that people saw not attractiveness in his dark skin but difference their stares giving him to himself filled something long empty within him and were like green blades sprouting in his consciousness there was fullness and strength and peace about it all he saw himself cloudy but real he saw the faces of the people at the tables round him white lights or as now the pink lights of the crimson gardens gave a glow and immediacy to white faces the pleasure of it equal to that of love or dream of seeing this art and bona and helen he'd look 
they were wonderfully flushed and beautiful not for himself because they were distantly who were they anyway god if he knew them he'd come in with them of that he was sure come where into life yes no into the crimson gardens a part of life a carbon bubble would it look purple if we went out into the night and looked at it his sudden starting to rise almost upset the table what in hell pardon what's the matter paul i forgot my cigarettes you're smoking one so i am pardon me the waiter straightens them out takes their order art what in hell's eating paul mooney ain't the word for it from bad to worse and those goddamn people staring so paul's a queer fish doesn't seem to mind he's my pal let me tell you you horn-rimmed owl-eyed hyena at that table and a lot better than you whoever you are queer about him i could stick up for him if he'd only come out one way or the other and tell a fellow besides a roommate has a right to know thinks i won't understand said so he's got a swell head when it comes to brains all right god he's a good straight fellow though only moony nut nuttish nuttery nutmeg what'd you say helen i was talking to bona thank you well it's nothing to get spiffy about what oh of course not please let's don't start some silly argument all over again well well now that's enough say waiter what's the matter with our order make it snappy will you crimson gardens hurrah so one feels the drinks come four highballs art passes cigarettes a girl dressed like a bareback rider in flaming pink makes her way through tables to the dance floor all lights are dim till they seem a lush afterglow of crimson spotlights the girl she sings liza little liza jane paul is rosy before his window he moves slightly towards bona with his own glow he seeks to penetrate a dark pain paul from the south what does that mean precisely except that you'll love or hate a nigger that's a lot what does it mean except that in chicago you'll have the courage to neither love or hate a priori but it would seem that you have queer words aren't these for a man who wears blue pants on a gym floor in the daytime will never matter you matter i'd like to know you whom i look at no not love not that knowing is a greater pleasure but that i have just found the joy of it you came just a month too late even this afternoon i dreamed to-night along the boulevard you found me cold paul johnson cold that's a good one eh art you fine old stupid fellow you but i feel good the colour and the music and the song a negress chants a lullaby beneath the mate eyes of a southern planter o oh, song and those flushed faces eager brilliant eyes hard to imagine them as unawakened your own oh they're awake all right and you know it too don't you bona what paul the truth of what i was thinking i'd like to know i know something of you you will before the evening's over i promise it crimson gardens hurrah so one feels the bareback writer balances agilely on the applause which is the tale of her song orchestral instruments warm up for jazz the flute is a cat that ripples its fur against the deep purring saxophone the drum throws sticks the cat jumps on the piano keyboard high diddle high diddle the cat and the fiddle crimson gardens hurrah jumps over the moon crimson gardens helen oh eliza rabbit eyes sparkling plays up to and tries to placate what she considers to be paul's contempt she always does that little liza jane once home she burns with the thought of what she's done she says all manner of snidey things about him and swears that she'll never go out again when he is along she tries to get art to break with him saying that if paul whom the whole dormitory calls a nigger is more to him than she is well she's through she does not break with art she goes out as often as she can with art and paul she explains this to herself by a piece of information which a friend of hers had given her men like him paul can fascinate one is not responsible for fascination not one girl had really loved paul he fascinated them bona didn't only thought she did time would tell and of course she didn't liza she plays up to and tries to placate paul paul is so deep these days and i'm so glad he's found someone to interest him i don't believe i do the thought escapes from bona just a moment before her anger at having said it bona you little puffy cat i do i do don't i paul her eyes ask her answer is a crash of jazz from the palm hidden orchestra crimson gardens is a body whose blood flows to a clot upon the dance floor art and helen clot 
soon bona and paul paul finds her a little stiff and his mind wandering to helen silly little kid who wants every highball spoon her hands touch for a souvenir supple perfect little dancer wishes for the next dance when he and art will exchange bona knows that she must win him to herself since when have men like you grown cold the first philosopher i thought you were a poet or a gym director hence your failure to make love bona's eyes flare water grow red about the rims she would like to tear away from him and dash across the clotted floor what do you mean mental concepts rule you if they were flush with mine good i don't believe they are how do you know mr philosopher mostly a priori you talk well for a gym director and you i hate you Ooh. she presses away paul conscious of the convention in it pulls her to him her body close her head still strains away he nearly crushes her she tries to pinch him then sees people staring and lets her arms fall their eyes meet both contemptuous the dance takes blood from their minds and packs it tingling in the torsos of their swaying bodies passionate blood leaps back into their eyes they are a dizzy blood clot on a gyrating floor they know that the pink-faced people have no part in what they feel their instinct leads them away from art and helen and towards the big uniformed black man who opens and closes the gilded exit door the cloak-room girl is tolerant of their impatience over such trivial things as wraps and slightly superior as the black man swings the door for them his eyes are knowing too many couples have passed out flushed and fidgety for him not to know the chill air is a shock to paul a strange thing happens he sees the gardens purple as if he were way off and a spot is in the purple the spot comes furiously towards him face of the black man it leers it smiles sweetly like a child's paul leaves bona and darts back so quickly that he doesn't give the doorman a chance to open he swings in stops before the huge bulk of the negro you're wrong yas sir brother you're wrong i came back to tell you to shake your hand and tell you that you are wrong that something beautiful is going to happen that the gardens are purple like a bed of roses would be at dusk that i came into the gardens into life in the gardens with one whom i did not know that i danced with her and did not know her that i felt passion contempt and passion for her whom i did not know that i thought of her that my thoughts were matches thrown into a dark window and all the while the gardens were purple like a bed of roses would be at dusk i came back to tell you brother that white faces are petals of roses that dark faces are petals of dusk that i am going out and gather petals that i am going out and know her whom i brought here with me to these gardens which are purple like a bed of roses would be at dusk paul and the black man shook hands when he reached the spot where they had been standing bona was gone end of section twenty eight section twenty nine of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain cadmus part one one ralph cadmus propped in his bed tries to read to read himself to sleep an oil lamp on a chair near his elbow burns unsteadily the cabin room is spaced fantastically about it whitewashed hearth and chimney black with sooty saw teeth ceiling patterned by the fringed globe of the lamp the walls unpainted are seasoned a rosin yellow and cracks between the boards are black these cracks are the lips the night winds use for whispering night winds in georgia are vagrant poets whispering cabinets against his will lets his book slip down and listens to them the warm whiteness of his bed the lamplight do not protect him from the weird chill of their song white man's land niggers sing burn bare black children till poor rivers bring rest and sweet glory in campground cadmus thin hair is streaked on the pillow his hand strokes the slim silk of his moustache his thumb pressed under his chin seems to be trying to give squareness and projection to it brown eyes stare from a lemon face moisture gathers beneath his armpits he slides down beneath the cover seeking release 
cabness near me now whoever you are my warm glowing sweetheart do not think that the face that rests beside you is the real cabness ralph cabness is a dream and dreams are faces with large eyes and weak chins and broad brows that get smashed by the fists of square faces the body of the world is bull-necked a dream is a soft face that fits uncertainly upon it god if i could develop that in words give what i know a bull neck and a heaving body all would go well with me wouldn't it sweetheart if i could feel that i came to the south to face it if i the dream not what is weak and afraid in me could become the face of the south how my lips would sing for it my songs being the lips of its soul 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 hell there ain't no such thing what in hell was that a rat had run across the thin boards of the ceiling cabinets thrusts his head out from the covers through the cracks a powdery faded red dust sprays down on him dust of slave fields dried scattered no use to read christ if he only could drink himself to sleep something as sure as fate was going to happen he couldn't stand this thing much longer a hen perched on a shelf in the adjoining room begins to tread her nails scrape the soft wood her feathers ruffle get out of that you egg-laying bitch cabness hurls a slipper against the wall the hen flies from her perch and cackles as if a skunk were after her now cut out that racket or i'll wring your neck for you answering cackles arise in the chicken-yard why in christ's hell can't you leave me alone damn it i wish your cackle would choke you choke every mother's son of them in this god-forsaken hole go away by god i'll wring your neck for you if you don't hell of a mess i've got in even the poultry is hostile go away go away by god i'll cabinus jumps from his bed his eyes are wild he makes for the door burst through it the hen driving blindly at the window-pane screams then flies and flops around trying to elude him cabinus catches her got you now you see bitch with his fingers about her neck he thrusts open the outside door and steps out into the serene loveliness of georgian autumn moonlight some distance off down in the valley a band of pine smoke silver gauze drifts steadily the half moon is a white child that sleeps upon the tree tops of the forest white winds croon its sleep song rock by baby black mother sways holding a white child on her bosom when the bow bends her breath hums through pine cones cradle will fall teat moon children at your breasts down will come baby black mother cabinus whirls the chicken by its neck and throws the head away picks up the hopping body warm sticky and hides it in a clump of bushes he wipes blood from his hands on to the coarse scant grass cabinus that's done o chromo in the big house there will wonder what's become of her pet hen well it'll teach her a lesson not to make a hen coop of my quarters quarters hell of a fine quarters i've got five years now look at me now earth's child the earth my mother god is a profligate red-nosed man about town bastardy me a bastard son has got a right to curse his maker god cabinus is about to shake his fists heavenward he looks up and the night's beauty strikes him dumb he falls to his knees sharp stones cut through his thin pajamas the shock sends a shiver over him he quivers tears mist his eyes he writhes god almighty dear god dear jesus do not torture me with beauty take it away give me an ugly world ha ugly stinking like unwashed niggers dear jesus do not chain me to myself and set these hills and valleys heaving with folk songs so close to me that i cannot reach them there is a radiant beauty in the night that touches and tortures me ugh hell get up you damn fool look around what's beautiful there hog pens and chicken yards dirty red mud stinking out house what's beauty anyway but ugliness if it hurts you god he doesn't exist but nevertheless he is ugly hence what comes from him is ugly lynchers and business men and that cockroach hanby especially how come that he gets to be principal of a school of the school i'm driven to teach him god's handiwork doubtless god and hanby they belong together two goddamn moral spouters oh no i won't let that emotion come up in me stay down stay down i tell you oh jesus thou art beautiful come ralph pull yourself together curses and adoration don't come from what is sane 
this loneliness dumbness awful intangible oppression is enough to drive a man insane miles from nowhere a speck on a georgia hillside jesus can you imagine it an atom of dust in agony on a hillside that's a spectacle for you come ralph old man pull yourself together cabness has stiffened he is conscious now of the night wind and of how it chills him he rises he totters as a man would who for the first time uses artificial limbs as a completely artificial man would the large frame house squatting on brick pillars where the principal of the school his wife and the boarding girls sleep seems a curious shadow of his mind he tries but cannot convince himself of its reality his gaze drifts down into the vale across the swamp up over the solid dusk bank of pines and rests bewildered like on the courthouse tower it is dull silver in the moonlight white child that sleeps upon the top of pines cabinet's mind clears he sees himself yanked beneath that tower he sees white minds with indolent assumption juggled justice and a nigger somewhere far off in the straight line of his sight is augusta christ how cut off from everything he is and ours ours north why not say a lifetime north washington sleeps its still peaceful streets how desirable they are its people whom he had always halfway despised new york impossible it was a fiction he had dreamed it an impotent nostalgia grips him it becomes intolerable he forces himself to narrow to a cabin silhouetted on a knoll about a mile away peace negroes within it are content they farm they sing they love they sleep cabinets wonders if perhaps they can feel him if perhaps he gives them bad dreams things are so immediate in georgia thinking that now he can go to sleep he re-enters his room he builds a fire in the open hearth the room dances to the tongues of flames and sings to the crackling and spurting of the logs wind comes up between the floorboards through the black cracks of the walls cabinets can't sleep light a cigarette if that old bastard comes over here and smells smoke i'm done for hell of a note can't even smoke the stillness of it where they burn and hang men you can't smoke can't take a swig of liquor what do they think this is anyway some sort of temperance school how did i ever land in such a hole ugh one might just as well be in his grave still as a grave jesus how still everything is does the world know how still it is people make noise they are afraid of silence of what lives and god of what dies in silence there must be many dead things moving in silence they come here to touch me i swear i feel their fingers come ralph pull yourself together what in hell was that only the rustle of leaves i guess you know ralph old man it wouldn't surprise me at all to see a ghost people don't think there are such things they rationalize their fear and call their cowardice science fine bunch they are damn it that was a noise and not the wind either a chicken maybe hell chickens don't wander around this time of night what in hell is it a scraping sound like a piece of wood dragging over the ground is coming near ha ha the ghosts down this way haven't got any chains to rattle so they drag trees along with them that's a good one but no joke something is outside this house as sure as hell whatever it is it can get a good look at me and i can't see it jesus christ cabinets pours water on the flames and blows his lamp out he picks up a poker and stealthily approaches the outside door swings it open and lurches into the night a calf carrying a yoke of wood bolts away from him and scampers down the road well i'm damned this goddamn place is sure getting the best of me come ralph old man pull yourself together nights can't last forever thank god for that it's sunday already first time in my life i've ever wanted sunday to come hell of a day and down here there's no such thing as ducking church well i'll see halsey and layman and get a good square meal that's something and halsey's a damn good feller can't talk to him though who in christ's world can i talk to a hen god myself i'm going bats no doubt of that come now ralph go in and make yourself go to sleep come now in the door that's right put the poker down there all right slip under the sheets close your eyes think nothing a long time nothing nothing 
don't even think nothing blank not even blank count no mustn't count nothing blank nothing blank space without stars in it no nothing nothing cabinet sleeps the winds like soft-voiced vagrant poets sing white man's land niggers sing burn bare black children till poor rivers bring rest and sweet glory in camp ground two the parlor of fred halsey's home there is a seediness about it it seems as though the fittings have given a frugal service to at least seven generations of middle-class shop owners an open grate burns cheerily in contrast to the gray cold changed autumn weather an old-fashioned mantelpiece supports a family clock not running a figure or two in imitation bronze and two small group pictures directly above it in a heavy oak frame the portrait of a bearded man black hair thick and curly intensifies the pallor of the high forehead the eyes are daring the nose sharp and regular the poise suggests a tendency to adventure checked by the necessities of absolute command the portrait is that of an english gentleman who has retained much of his culture in that money has enabled him to escape being drawn through a land-grubbing pioneer life his nature and features modified by marriage and circumstances have been transmitted to his great-grandson fred to the left of this picture spaced on the wall is a smaller portrait of the great-grandmother that here there is a negro strain no one would doubt but it is difficult to say in precisely what feature it lies on close inspection her mouth is seen to be wistfully twisted the expression of her face seems to shift before one's gaze now ugly repulsive now sad and somehow beautiful in its pain a tin wood-box rests on the floor below to the right of the great-grandfather's portrait hangs a family group the father mother two brothers and one sister of fred it includes himself some thirty years ago when his face was an olive white and his hair luxuriant and dark and wavy the father is a rich brown the mother practically white of the children the girl quite young is like fred the two brothers darker the walls of the room are plastered and painted green an old upright piano is tucked into the corner near the window the window looks out on a forlorn box-like whitewashed frame church negroes are gathering on foot driving questionable gray and brown mules and in an occasional ford for afternoon service beyond georgia hills roll off into the distance their dreary aspect heightened by the gray spots of unpainted one and two room shanties clumps of pine trees here and there are the dark points the whole landscape is approaching the church bell tolls above its squat tower a great spiral of buzzards reaches far into the heavens an ironic comment upon the path that leads into the christian land three rocking chairs are grouped around the grate sunday papers scattered on the floor indicate a recent usage halsey a well-built stocky fellow hair cropped close enters the room his sunday clothes smell of wood and glue for it is his habit to potter around his wagon shop even on the lord's day he is followed by professor layman tall heavy loose-jointed georgia negro by turns teacher and preacher who has travelled in almost every nook and corner of the state and hence knows more than would be good for any one other than a silent man cabinets trying to force through a gathering heaviness trails in behind them they slip into chairs before the fire layman showly fine mr halsey showly fine this town's right good at feedin folks better than most towns in the state even for preachers but i can say this beats em all yes yeah, sir now ain't that right professor cabness cabness yes sir this beats them all all right best i've had and that's a fact though my comparison doesn't carry far you know layman how's that professor cabness well this is my first time out layman for a fact ain't seed you round so much what's the trouble don't like our folks down this away halsey ain't that layman he ain't like most northern niggers that way ain't a thing stuck up about him he likes us you and me may be all 
it's that red mud over yonder gets stuck in it and can't get out laughs and then he loves the fire so warm as it's been coldest yankee i've ever seen but i'm going to get him out now in a jiffy eh cabness cabness sure i should say so sure don't think it's because i don't like folks down this way just the opposite in fact there's more hospitality and everything it's div that is there's lots of northern exaggeration about the south it's not half the terror they picture it things are not half bad as one could easily figure out for himself without ever crossing the mason and dixon line all these people wouldn't stay down here especially the rich the ones that could easily leave if conditions were so mighty bad and then too some time back my family were southerners you know from georgia in fact layman nothing to feel proud about professor neither your folks nor mine halsey in a mock religious tone amen to that brother layman amen turning to cabinets half playful yet somehow dead in earnest and mr cabinets kindly remember you're in the land of cotton hell of a land the white folks get the bowl the niggers get the stalk and don't you dare touch the bowl or even look at it they'll swing you show laughs cabinets but they wouldn't touch a gentleman fellows men like us three here layman niggers a nigger down this away professor and only two dividends good and bad and even they ain't permanent categories they sometimes mixes em up when it comes to lynchin i've seen em do it halsey don't let the fear into ye though cabinets this county's a good un ain't been a stringin up i can remember laughs layman this is a good town and a good county but there's some that makes up for it cabinets things are better now though since that stir about those peonage cases aren't they layman ever hear tell of a single shot killin more'n one rabbit professor cabinets no of course not that is but then halsey now i know you weren't born yesterday sprung up so rapid like you ain't heard of the brick thrown in the hornet's nest laughs cabinets hardly hardly i know halsey course you do to layman see northern niggers ain't as dumb as they make out to be cabinets overlooking the remark just stirs them up to sting halsey to perfection and put just like a professor should put it cabinets that's what actually did happen layman well if it ain't so's only because the stingers already movin just as fast as they can go and been goin ever since i can remember and then some oh, though i don't usually make mention of it halsey damn sight better not say layman you come from where they're always swarmin don't you layman yes sir i do that show don't want to mention it but it's a fact i've seed the time when there weren't no use to even stretch out flat upon the ground seen em shoot and cut a man to pieces who had died the night before yes sir and they didn't stop when they found out he was dead just went on a hacking at him anyway cabinets what did you do what did you say to them professor layman them's the things you neither does a thing or talks about if you want to stay around this away professor halsey listen to what he's tellin you cabinets may come in handy some day cabinets can't something be done but of course not this preacher-ridden race pray and shout they're in the preacher's hands that's what it is and the preacher's hands are in the white man's pockets halsey present company always accepted cabinets the professor knows i wasn't referring to him layman preacher's a preacher anywheres you turn no use exceptin cabinets well of course if you look at it that way i didn't mean but can't something be done layman show yes yeah, sir and done first rate and well just like sam raymond done it cabinets how's that what did he do layman the white folks reckon i oughtn't tell it had just not two others like you kill a cow brained em with an axe when they caught sam raymond by a stream 
they was about to do for him when he up and says white folks i gotter die i knows that but won't ye let me die in my own way some was for gittin after him but the boss held em back and says just so long's the nigger dies and sam fell down on to his knees and prayed o oh, lord i's comin to ye and he up and jumps in the stream singing from the church becomes audible above it rising and falling in a plaintive moan a woman's voice swells to shouting cabinus hears it his face gives way to an expression of mingled fear contempt and pity layman takes no notice of it halsey grins at cabinus he feels like having a little sport with him halsey let's go to church eh cabinus cabinus seeking control all right no sir not by a damn sight once a day's enough for me christ but that stuff gets to me meaning no reflection on you professor halsey course not say cabinus noticed you this morning what do you get up for and go out cabinus couldn't stand the shouting and that's a fact we don't have that sort of thing up north we do but that is someone should see to it that they are stopped or put out when they get so bad the preacher has to stop his sermon for them halsey is that the way you all sit on sisters up north cabinets in the church i used to go to no one ever shouted halsey lungs we cabinets hardly that is halsey yankees are right up the minute in tellin folk how to turn a trick they always were good at talkin cabinets well anyway they should be stopped layman that's right that's true and it's the worst ones in the community that comes into the church to shout i've sort of made a study of it you take a man what drinks the biggest liquor head around will come into the church and yell the loudest and the sister what's done wrong and is always doing wrong will sit down in the amen corner and swing her arms and shout her head off seems as if they can't control themselves out in the world they can't control themselves in church now don't that sound logical professor halsey reckon it's as good as any but i heard that queer cuss over yonder you know him don't you cabinets well you ought to he had a run-in with your boss the other day same as you'll have if you don't walk the chalk line and the quicker the better i hate that handy ornery bastard i'll smash his mouth in one of these days well as i was saying that feller lewis's name i heard him saying something about a stream what's damned has got to cut loose somewheres and that sounds good i know the feeling myself he strikes me as a knowin a bucket for about most things that fellow does seems like he doesn't want to talk and does sometimes like layman here damn queer feller him layman can't make heads or tails of him and i've seen lots of queer possums in my day everybody's wondering about him white folks too he'll have to leave here soon that show always asking questions and i ain't seed his lips move once pokin round and notin somethin noted what i said the other day and that weren't for notin down cabinets what was that layman oh a lynching that took place about a year ago the worst i know of round these parts halsey bill burnham layman nah mame lambkins halsey grunts but says nothing the preacher's voice rolls from the church in an insistent chanting monotone at regular intervals it rises to a crescendo note the sister begins to shout her voice high-pitched and hysterical is almost perfectly attuned to the nervous key of cabinets halsey notices his distress and is amused by it layman's face is expressionless cabinets wants to hear the story of mame lapkins he does not want to hear it it can be no worse than the shouting cabinets his chair rocking faster what about mame lambkins halsey tell him layman the preacher momentarily stops the choir together with the entire congregation sings an old spiritual the music seems to quiet the shouter her heavy breathing has the sound of evening winds that blow through pine cones layman's voice is uniformly low and soothing a cane break murmuring the tale to its neighbor road would be more passionate layman white folks know that niggers talk and they don't mind just so long as nothing comes of it so here goes she was in the family way mame lambkins was they killed her in the street and some white man seeing the risin in her stomach 
as she lay there soppy in her blood like any cow took and ripped her belly open and the kid fell out it was living but a nigger baby ain't supposed to live so he jabbed his knife in it and stuck it to a tree and then they all went away cabinets christ no what had she done layman tried to hide her husband when they was after him a shriek pierces the room the bronze pieces on the mantel hum the sister cries frantically jesus jesus i found jesus o oh lord glory to god one mo sinner is a comin home at the height of this a stone wrapped round with paper crashes through the window cabinet springs to his feet terror-stricken layman is worried halsey picks up the stone takes off the wrapper smooths it out and reads you northern nigger it's time fur ye to leave get along now cabinets knows that the command is meant for him fear squeezes him caves him in as a violent external pressure would fear flows inside him it fills him up he bloats he saves himself from bursting by dashing wildly from the room halsey and layman stare stupidly at each other the stone the crumpled paper are things huge things that weigh them their thoughts are vaguely concerned with the texture of the stone with the colour of the paper then they remember the words and begin to shift them about in sentences layman even construes them grammatically suddenly the sense of them comes back to halsey he grips layman by the arm and they both follow after cabness a false dusk has come early the countryside is ashen chill cabins and roads and cane breaks whisper the church choir dipping into a long silence sings my lord what a morning my lord what a morning my lord what a morning when the stars begin to fall softly luminous over the hills and valleys the faint spray of a scattered star three a splotchy figure drives forward along the cane and corn stalk hemmed in road a scarecrow replica of cabinets awkwardly animate fantastically plastered with red georgia mud it skirts the big house whose windows shine like mellow lanterns in the dusk its shoulder jogs against a sweet gum tree the figure caroms off against the cabin door and lunges in it slams the door as if to prevent some one entering after it god almighty they're here after me on me all along the road i saw their eyes flaring from the cane hounds shouts what in god's name did i run here for a mud hole trap i stumbled on a rope o oh god a rope their clammy hands were like the love of death playing up and down my spine trying to trip my legs to trip my spine up and down my spine my spine my legs why in hell didn't they catch me cabinets wheels around half defiant half numbed with a more immediate fear wanted to trap me here get out of there i see you he grabs a broom from beside the chimney and violently pokes it under the bed the broom strikes a tin wash-tub the noise bewilders he recovers not there in the closet he throws the broom aside and grips the poker starts towards the closet door towards somewhere in the perfect blackness behind the chimney i'll brain you he stops short the barks of hounds evidently in pursuit reach him a voice liquid in distance yells hi hi o oh god they're after me holy father mother of christ hell this ain't no time for prayer voices just outside the door reckon he's here don't see no light though the door is flung open cabinets get back or i'll kill you he braces himself brandishing the poker halsey coming in ain't as bad as all that put that thing down layman it's only us professor nobody else after you cabinets halsey layman close that door don't light that light for god's sake get away from there halsey nobody's after you cabinets i'm telling you put that thing down and get yourself together cabinets i tell you they are i saw them i heard the hounds halsey these ain't the days of hounds and uncle tom's cabin feller white folks ain't in for all them theatrics these days they's more direct than that if what they wanted was to get you they'd have just marched right in and took you where you sat somebody's down by the branch chasing rabbits and a tree and possums a shot is heard halsey got em i reckon saw tom goin out with his gun tom's pretty lucky most times he goes to the bureau and lights the lamp the circular fringe is patterned on the ceiling 
the moving shadows of the men are huge against the bare wall boards halsey walks up to cabinets takes the poker from his grip and without more ado pushes him into a chair before the dark hearth halsey you're a mess here layman get some trash and start a fire layman fumbles around finds some newspapers and old bags puts them in the hearth arranges the wood and kindles the fire halsey sets a black iron kettle where it soon will be boiling then takes from his hip pocket a bottle of corn liquor which he passes to cabinets halsey here this'll straighten ye out a bit cabinets nervously draws the cork and gulps the liquor down cabinets ha good stuff thanks thank you halsey halsey good stuff you're damn right hanby there don't think so wonder he doesn't come over to find out who's burnin his oil miserly bastard him the boys what made this stuff are you listenin to me cabinets the boys what made this stuff have got the art down like i heard you say you'd like to be with words eh have some layman layman don't think i care for none thank you just the same mr halsey halsey care hell course you care everybody cares around these parts preachers and school teachers and everybody here here take it don't try that line on me layman limbers up a little but he cannot quite forget that he is on school ground layman that's right that's true show shinin is the only business what pays in these hard times he takes a nip and passes the bottle to cabinets cabinets is in the middle of a long swig when a rap sounds on the door he almost spills the bottle but manages to pass it to halsey just as the door swings open and hanby enters he is a well-dressed smooth rich black-skinned negro who thinks there is no one quite so suave and polished as himself to members of his own race he affects manners of a wealthy white planter or when he is up north he lets it be known that his ideas are those of the best new england tradition to white men he bows without ever completely humbling himself tradesmen in the town tolerate him because he spends his money with them he delivers his words with a full consciousness of his moral superiority hanby hum error professor cabinets to come straight to the point the progress of the negro race is jeopardized whenever the personal habits and examples set by its guides and mentors fall below the acknowledged and hard-won standard of its average member this institution of which i am the humble president was founded and has been maintained at a cost of great labor and untold sacrifice its purpose is to teach our youth to live better cleaner more noble lives to prove to the world that the negro race can be just like any other race it hopes to attain this aim partly by the salutary examples set by its instructors i cannot hinder the progress of a race simply to indulge a single member i thought the matter out beforehand i can assure you therefore if i find your resignation on my desk by to-morrow morning mr cabinets i shall not feel obliged to call in the sheriff otherwise cabinets a fellow can take a drink in his own room if he wants to in the privacy of his own room and be his room but not the institution's room mr cabinets cabinets this is my room while i'm in it hanby mr claiborne the sheriff can inform you as to that cabinets oh well what do i care glad to get out of this mud hole hanby i should think so from your looks cabinets you needn't get sarcastic about it hanby no that is true and i needn't wait for your resignation either mr cabinets cabinets oh you'll get that all right don't worry hanby and i should like to have the room thoroughly aired and cleaned and ready for your successor by to-morrow noon professor cabinets trying to rise you can have your goddamn room right away i don't want it hanby but i won't have your cursing halsey pushes cabinets back into his chair halsey sit down cabinets till i wash you hanby to halsey i would rather not have drinking men on the premises mr halsey you will oblige me halsey i'll oblige you by staying right on this spot this spot get me till i get damned ready to leave he approaches hanby hanby retreats but manages to hold his dignity halsey let me get you told right now mr samuel hanby now listen to me i ain't no slick and span slave you've hired and don't you think it for a minute you've bullied enough about this town and besides where's that bill you've been owing me listen to me if i don't get it paid in by to-morrow noon mr hanby he mockingly assumes hanby's tone and manner i shall feel obliged to call the sheriff and that sheriff'll be myself who'll 
catch ye in the road and pull ye out your buggy and rightly attend to ye you heard me now leave him alone i'm taking him home with me i got it fixed before you came in he's going to work with me shaping shafts and building wagons will make a man of him what nobody ye get me what nobody can take advantage of that's all halsey burrs off into vague and incoherent comment pause disagreeable layman's eyes are glazed on the spurting fire cabinets wants to rise and put both halsey and hanby in their places he vaguely knows that he must do this else the power of direction will completely slip from him to those outside the conviction is just strong enough to torture him to bring a feverish quick passing flare into his eyes to mutter words soggy and hot saliva to jerk his arms upward in futile protest halsey noticing his gestures thinks it is water that he desires he brings a glass to him cadmus slings it to the floor heat of the conviction dies his arms crumple his upper lip his moustache quiver rap rap on the door the sounds slap cadmus they bring a hectic colour to his cheeks like huge cold finger-tips they touch his skin and goose flesh it hanby strikes a commanding pose he moves toward layman layman's face is innocently immobile halsey who's there voice lewis halsey come in lewis come on in lewis enters he is the queer fellow who has been referred to a tall wiry copper-coloured man thirty perhaps his mouth and eyes suggest purpose guided by an adequate intelligence he is what a stronger cabinet might have been and in an odd faint way resembles him as he steps towards the others he seems to be issuing sharply from a vivid dream lewis shakes hands with halsey nods perfunctorily to hanby who has stiffened to meet him smiles rapidly at layman and settles with real interest on cabinets lewis cabinets passed me on the road had a piece of business of my own and couldn't get here any sooner thought i might be able to help him some way or other halsey a good bath's about all he needs now and something to put his mind to rest lewis i think i can give him that that note was meant for me some negroes have grown uncomfortable at my being here cabinets you mean mr lewis some coloured folks threw it christ almighty halsey that's what he means and just as i told you white folks more direct than that cabinets what are they after you for lewis it's a long story cabinets too long for now and it might involve present company he laughs pleasantly and gestures vaguely in the direction of hanby tell you about it later on perhaps cabinets you're not going lewis not till my month's up halsey how's that lewis i'm on a sort of contract with myself he is about to leave well glad it's nothing serious halsey come round to the shop some time why don't you lewis i've asked you enough i'd like to have a talk with you i ain't a, as dumb as i look cabinets and meal be in most any time not much work these days wish to hell there was this bird gets to me when there ain't in answer to lewis question he's going to work with me ya yeah. night air this side the branch ain't good for him looks at hanby laughs lewis i see his eyes turn to cabinets in the instant of their shifting a vision of the life they are to meet cabinets a promise of a soil soaked beauty uprooted thinning out suspended a few feet above the soil whose touch would resurrect him arm's length removed from him whose will to help there is a swift intuitive interchange of consciousness cabinets has a sudden need to rush into the arms of this man his eyes call brother and then a savage cynical twist about within him mocks his impulse and strengthens him to repulse lewis his lips curl cruelly his eyes laugh they are glittering needles stitching with a throbbing ache they draw lewis too lewis brusquely wheels on hanby lewis i'd like to see you sir a moment if you don't mind hanby's tight collar and vest effectively preserve him hanby yes sir mr lewis right away lewis see you later halsey halsey so long thanks show hope so lewis as he opens the door and hanby passes out a woman miles down the valley begins to sing her song is a spark that travels swiftly to the nearby cabins like purple tallow flames songs jet up they spread a ruddy haze over the heavens the haze swings low now the whole countryside is a soft chorus lord o oh lord lewis closes the door behind him a flame jets out the kettle is boiling halsey notices it he pulls the wash-tub from beneath the bed 
he arranges for the bath before the fire halsey told ye them theatrics didn't fit a white man the niggers just like i told ye and after him ain't surprisin though he ain't bowed to none of them na sir to nary a one of them nary an inch nary a time and only mixed when he was good and ready cabness that song halsey do you hear it halsey that's a man hear me cabness a man cabness jesus do you hear it halsey hear it hear what course i hear it listen to what i'm tellin you a man get me they'll get him yet if he don't watch out cabness has jolted into his fear cabness get him what do you mean how not lynch him Allsy. nah take a shotgun and shoot his eyes clear out well anyway it wasn't fur you just like i told you you'll stay over at the house and work with me eh boy good to get away from his knobs eh damn big stiff though him and you're not the first and i can tell you laughs he bustles and fusses about cabness as if he were a child cabness submits wearily he has no will to resist him layman his voice is like a deep hollow echo that's right that's true show everybody's been expectin that the bust up was comin surprised em all ye held on as long as ye did teachin in the south ain't the thing fur ye nah sir you ought to be way back up north where sometimes i wish i was but i've hung on down this away so long halsey and there'll never be no leavin time fur ye end of section twenty nine section thirty of cain by jean toomer this librivox recording is in the public domain cabness part two for a month has passed halsey's workshop it is an old building just off the main street of sempter the walls too within a few feet of the ground are of an age-worn cement mixture on the outside they are considerably crumbled and peppered with what looks like musket shot inside the plaster has fallen away in great chunks leaving the laths grayed and cobwebbed exposed a sort of loft above the shop proper serves as a breakwater for the rain and sunshine which otherwise would have free entry to the main floor the shop is filled with old wheels and parts of wheels broken shafts and wooden litter a double door midway the street wall to the left of this a workbench that holds a vice and a variety of woodwork tools a window with as many panes broken as whole throws light on the bench opposite in the rear wall a second window looks out upon the back yard in the left wall a rickety smoke blackened chimney and hearth with fire blazing smooth worn chairs grouped about the hearth suggest the village meeting place several large wooden blocks chipped and cut and sawed on their upper surfaces are in the middle of the floor they are the supports used in almost any sort of wagon work their idleness means that halsey has no worthwhile job on foot to the right of the central door is a junk heap and directly behind this stairs that lead down into the cellar the cellar is known as the hole besides being the home of a very old man it is used by halsey on those occasions when he spices up the life of the small town halsey wonderfully himself in his work overall stands in the doorway and gazes up the street expectantly then his eyes grow listless he slouches against the smooth rubbed frame he lights a cigarette shifts his position braces an arm against the door cabness passes the window and stoops to get in under halsey's arm he is awkward and ludicrous like a schoolboy in his big brother's new overalls he skirts the large blocks on the floor and drops into a chair before the fire halsey saunters towards him cabness time for lunch halsey yeah he stands by the hearth rocking backward and forward he stretches his hands out to the fire 
he washes them in the warm glow of the flames they never get cold but he warms them cabness saw lewis up the street said he'd be down halsey's eyes brighten he looks at cabness turns away says nothing cabness fidgets twists his thin blue cloth covered limbs pulls closer to the fire till the heat stings his shins pushes back pokes the burned logs puts on several fresh ones fidgets the town bell strikes twelve cabness fix it up for to-night halsey leave it to me cabness get lewis in halsey try to the air is heavy with the smell of pine and resin green logs spurt and sizzle sap trickles from an old pine knot into the flames layman enters he carries a lunch pail cabness for the moment thinks that he is a day labourer layman evenin gentlemen both what say layman layman squares a chair to the fire and droops into it several town fellows silent unfathomable men for the most part saunter in overalls thick tanned shoes felt hats marvellously shaped and twisted one asks halsey for a cigarette he gets it the blacksmith a tremendous black man comes in from the forge not even a nod from him he picks up an axle and goes out lewis enters the town men look curiously at him suspicion and an open liking contest for possession of their faces they are uncomfortable one by one they drift into the street layman heard ye was leavin mr lewis cabness months up eh hell of a month i've got halsey sorry you goin lewis just gettin acquainted like lewis sorry myself halsey in a way layman gettin to like our town mr lewis lewis i'm afraid it's on a different basis professor halsey and i have yet to hear about that basis been waitin long enough god knows seems to me like you'd take pity a fella if nothin more cabness something that old black cockroach over yonder doesn't like whatever it is layman that's right that's right show halsey a fella dropped in here t'other day and said he knew what you was about said you had queer opinions well i could have told him you was a queer one myself but not the way he was driftin didn't mean anything by it but just let drop he thought you was a little wrong up here crazy you know laughs cabness you mean old blodson hell he's bats himself lewis i remember him we had a talk but what he found queer i think was not my opinions but my lack of them in half an hour he had settled everything bold weevils god the world war weevils and wars are the pests that god sends against the sinful people are too weak to correct themselves the redeemer is coming back get ready ye sinners for the advent of our lord interesting a eh, cabinets but not exactly what we want halsey ye could have come to me i've show been after ye enough most every time i've seen ye cabinets sarcastically how's it yet never came to us professors lewis i did to one cabinets you mean to say you got something from that celluloid collar eraser cleaned old codger over in the mud hole halsey rough on the old boy ain't he laughs lewis something yes layman here could have given me quite a deal but the incentive to his keeping quiet is so much greater than anything i could have offered him to open up that i crossed him off my mind and you cabness what about me halsey tell him lewis for god's sake tell him i've told him but it's something else he wants so bad i've heard him downstairs mumbling with the old man lewis the old man cabness what about me come on now you know so much halsey tell him lewis tell it to him lewis life has already told him more than he is capable of knowing it has given him in excess of what he can receive i've been offered stuff in his stomach curdled and he vomited me cabness face twitches his body writhes cabness you know a lot you do how about halsey lewis yes halsey fits here belongs here an artist in your way aren't you halsey halsey reckon i am lewis give me the work and fair pay and i ain't askin nothin better went overseas and saw france and i come back been up north and i come back went to school but there ain't no books what's got the feel to them of them their tools 
nasser and i'm a tellin you a shrivelled bony white man passes the window and enters the shop he carries a broken hatchet handle and a severed head he speaks with a flat drawn voice to halsey who comes forward to meet him mr ramsay can ye fix this for me halsey halsey looking it over reckon so mr ramsay here cabness a little practice fur ye halsey directs cabness showing him how to place the handle in the vice and cut it down the knife hangs cabness thinks that it must be dull he jerks it hard the tool goes deep and shaves too much off mr ramsay smiles brokenly at him mr ramsay to halsey still breakin in the new hand eh halsey seems like a likely enough fowler once he gets the hang of it he gives a tight laugh at his own good humour cabness burns red the back of his neck stings him beneath his collar he feels stifled through ramsay the whole white south weighs down upon him the pressure is terrific he sweats under the arms chill beads run down his body his brows concentrate upon the handle as though his own life was staked upon the perfect shaving of it he begins to out and out botch the job halsey smiles halsey he'll make a good un some of these days mr ramsey mr ramsey you ought to know your daddy was a good un before ye runs in the family seems like to me halsey that's right mr ramsey cabness is hopeless halsey takes the handle from him with a few death strokes he shaves it fits it gives it to ramsey mr ramsey how much on this halsey no charge mr ramsey mr ramsey going out all right halsey come down and take it out and trade shoe strings or something halsey yes sir mr ramsey halsey rejoins lewis and layman cabness hangdog fashion follows him halsey they like ye if ye work for them layman that's right mr halsey that's right show the group is about to resume its talk when hanby enters he is all energy bustle and business he goes direct to cabness hanby an axle is out in the buggy which i would like to have shaped into a crowbar you will see that it is fixed for me without waiting for an answer and knowing that cabness will follow he passes out cabness scowling silent trudges after him hanby from the outside have that ready for me by three o'clock young man i shall call for it cabness under his breath as he comes in the hell you say you old black swamp gunt he slings the axle on the floor halsey wee ye layman lunch finished long ago rises heavily he shakes hands with lewis layman might not see you again before ye leave mr lewis i enjoys to hear ye talk ye might have been a preacher maybe a bishop some day sho do hope to see ye back this way again some time mr lewis lewis thanks professor hope i'll see you layman waves a long arm loosely to the others and leaves cabness goes to the door his eyes sullen gaze up the street cabness carry kay's comin with the lunch about time she passes the window her red girl's cap catching the sun flashes vividly with a stiff awkward little movement she crosses the door sill and gives cabness one of the two baskets which she is carrying there's a slight stoop to her shoulders the curves of her body blend with this to a soft rounded charm her gestures are stiffly variant black bangs curl over the forehead of her oval olive face her expression is dazed but on provocation it can melt into a wistful smile adolescent she is easily the sister of fred halsey carrie k mother says excuse her brother fred and ralph for being late cabness everything's all right and o k carrie kate o k and all right the two men settle on their lunch carrie with hardly a glance in the direction of the hearth as is her habit is about to take the second basket down to the old man when lewis rises in doing so he draws her unwitting attention their meeting is a swift sunburst lewis impulsively moves towards her his mind flashes images of her life in the southern town he sees the nascent woman her flesh already stiffening to cartilage drying to bone her spirit bloom even now touched sullen bitter 
her rich beauty fading he wants to he stretches forth his hands to hers he takes them they feel like warm cheeks against his palms the sun bursts from her eyes floods up and halos him christ eyes his eyes look to her fearlessly she loves into them and then something happens her face blanches awkwardly she draws away the sin bogies of respectable southern colored folks clamor at her look out be a good girl a good girl look out she gropes for her basket that has fallen to the floor finds it and marches with a rigid gravity to her task of feeding the old man like the glowing white ash of a, a burned paper lewis eyelids wavering settle down he stirs in the direction of the rear window from the back yard mules tethered to odd trees and posts blink dumbly at him they too seem burdened with an impotent pain cabness and halsey are still busy with their lunch they haven't noticed him after a while he turns to them lewis your sister halsey what's to become of her what are you going to do for her halsey who what what am i going to do lewis what i mean is what does she do down there halsey oh feeds the old man had lunch lewis lewis thanks yes you have never felt her have you halsey well no i guess not i don't suppose you can nor can she old man halsey some one lives down there i've never heard of him tell me cabness takes time from his meal to answer with some emphasis cabness there's lots of things you ain't heard of lewis dare say i'd like to see him cabness you'll get all the chance you want to-night halsey fixin a little something up for to-night lewis the three of us and some girls come round about ten thirty lewis glad to but what under the sun does he do down there halsey as cabness he blows off to him every chance he gets cabness gives a grunting laugh his mouth twists carrie returns from the cellar avoiding lewis she speaks to her brother carrie k brother fred father hasn't eaten now goin on the second week but mumbles and talks funny or tries to talk when i put his hands on to the food he frightens me and i don't know what to do and oh i came near forgettin brother but mr marmon he was eatin lunch when i saw him told me to tell you that the lumber wagon busted down and he wanted you to fix it for him said he reckoned he could get it to you after he ate halsey chucks a half-eaten sandwich in the fire gets up arranges his blocks goes to the door and looks anxiously up the street the wind whirls a small spiral in the gray dust road halsey why didn't you tell me sooner little sister carrie k i forgot to and just remembered it now brother her soft rolled words are fresh pain to lewis he wants to take her north with him what for he wonders what cabness could do for her what she could do for him mother him carrie gathers the lunch things silently and in her pinched manner curtsies and departs cabness lights his after-lunch cigarette lewis who has sensed a change becomes aware that he is not included in it he starts to ask again about the old man decides not to rises to go lewis think i'll run along halsey halsey sure glad to see ye any time cabness don't forget to-night lewis don't worry i won't so long cabinet so long we'll be expectin ye lewis passes halsey at the door halsey's cheeks form a vacant smile his eyes are wide awake watching for the wagon to turn from broad street into his road halsey so long his words reach lewis halfway to the corner five night soft belly of a pregnant negress throbs evenly against the torso of the south night throbs a womb song to the south cane and cotton fields pine forests cypress swamps sawmills and factories are fecund at her touch night's womb song sets them singing night winds are the breathing of the unborn child whose calm throbbing in the belly of a negress sets them somnolently singing 
hear their song white man's land niggers sing burn bare black children till poor rivers bring rest and sweet glory in campground semper's streets are vacant and still white paint on the wealthier houses has the chill blue glitter of distant stars negro cabins are a purple blur broad street is deserted winds stir beneath the corrugated iron canopies and dangle odd bits of rope tied to horse and mule gnawed hitching posts one store window has a light in it chesterfield cigarette and chiro cola cardboard advertisements are stacked in it from a side door two men come out pause for a last word and then they say good night soon they melt in shadows thicker than they way off down the street four figures sway beneath iron awnings which form a sort of corridor that imperfectly echoes and jumbles what they say a fifth form joins them they turn into the road that leads to halsey's workshop the old building is phosphorescent above deep shade the figures pass through the double door night winds whisper in the eaves sing weirdly in the ceiling cracks stir curls of shavings on the floor halsey lights a candle a good-sized lumber wagon wheels off rests upon the blocks cabinets makes a face at it an unearthly hush is upon the place no one seems to want to talk to move lest the scraping of their feet halsey come on down this way folks he leads the way stella follows and close after her cora lewis and cabinets they descend into the hole it seems huge limitless in the candlelight the walls are of stone wonderfully fitted they have no opening save a small iron barred window toward the top of each they are dry and warm the ground slopes away to the rear of the building and thus leaves the south wall exposed to the sun the blacksmith's shop is plumb against the right wall the floor is clay shavings have at odd times been matted into it in the right-hand corner under the stairs two good-sized pine mattresses resting on cardboard are on either side of a wooden table on this are several half-burned candles and an oil lamp behind the table an irregular piece of mirror hangs on the wall a loose something that looks to be a gaudy ball costume dangles from a near-by hook to the front a second table holds a lamp and several whisky glasses six rickety chairs are near this table two old wagon wheels rest on the floor to the left sitting in a high-backed chair which stands upon a low platform the old man he is like a bust in black walnut gray-bearded gray-haired prophetic immobile lewis eyes are sunk in him the others unconcerned are about to pass on to the front table when lewis grips halsey and so turns him that the candle flame shines obliquely on the old man's features lewis and he rules over cabinets the smoke and fire of the forge lewis black vulcan i wouldn't say so that forehead great woolly beard those eyes a mute john the baptist of a new religion or a tongue-tied shadow of an old cabinets his tongue is tied all right and i can vouch for that lewis has he never talked to you halsey cabinets won't give him a chance he laughs the girls laugh cabinets winces lewis what do you call him halsey father lewis good father what cabinets father of hell halsey father's the only name we have for him come on let's sit down and get to the pleasure of the evening lewis father john it is from now on slave boy whom some christian mistress taught to read the bible black man who saw jesus in the rice fields and began preaching to his people moses and christ words used for songs dead blind father of a muted folk who feel their way upward to a life that crushes or absorbs them speak father suppose your eyes could see old man the years hold hands oh sing suppose your lips halsey does he never talk halsey nah 
but sometimes only seldom mumbles sis says he talks cabness i've heard him talk halsey first i've ever heard of it you don't give him a chance sis says she's made out several words mostly one and like as not cause it was sin cabness all those old fogies stutter about sin cora laughs in a loose sort of way she is a tall thin mulatto woman her eyes are deep set behind a pointed nose her hair is coarse and bushy seeing that stella also is restless she takes her arm and the two women move towards the table they slip into chairs halsey follows and lights the lamp he lays out a pack of cards stella sorts them as if telling fortunes she is a beautifully proportioned large-eyed brown-skinned girl except for the twisted line of her mouth when she smiles or laughs there is about her no suggestion of the life she's been through cabness with great mock solemnity goes to the corner takes down the robe and dons it he is a curious spectacle acting a part yet very real he joins the others at the table they are used to him lewis is surprised he laughs cabness shrinks and then glares at him with a furtive hatred halsey bringing out a bottle of corn liquor pours drinks halsey come on lewis come on you fellows here's looking at you then as if suddenly recalling something he jerks away from the table and starts towards the steps cabness where you going halsey halsey where where you think that oak beam in the wagon cabness come ere come ere sit down what in hell's wrong with you fellers you with your wagon lewis with his father john this ain't the time for foolin with wagons daytime's bad enough for that ere sit down ere lewis you too sit down have a drink that's right drink corn liquor love the girls and listen to the old man mumblin sin there seems to be no good time spirit to the party something in the air is too tense and deep for that lewis seated now so that his eyes rest upon the old man merges with his source and lets the pain and beauty of the south meet him there white faces pain pollen settle downward through a cane sweet mist and touch the ovaries of yellow flowers cotton bowls bloom droop black roots twist in a barged red soil beneath a blazing sky magnolias fragrant a trifle futile lovely far off his eyelids close a force begins to heave and rise stella is serious reminiscent stella us all is brought up to hate sin worse than death cabness and then before you have your eyes half open you're made to love it if you want to live stella us never cabness oh i know your story that old prim bastard over yonder and then old calvert's office stella it wasn't them cabness i know they put you out of church and then i guess the preacher came around and asked for some but that's your body now me halsey passing him the bottle all right kid we believe you here take another where's clover stell stella you know how jim is when he's just out the swamp done up in shine and wouldn't let her come said he'd bust her head open if she went out cabness don't see why he doesn't stay over with laura where he belongs stella ask him and i reckon he'll tell you more than you want halsey the nigger hates the sight of a black woman worse than death sorry to mix you up this way lewis but you see how tis lewis skin is tight and glowing over the fine bones of his face his lips tremble his nostrils quiver the others notice this and smile knowingly at each other drinks and smokes are passed around they pay no never minds to him a real party is being worked up then lewis opens his eyes and looks at them their smiles disperse in hot cold tremors cabness chokes his laugh it sputters gurgles his eyes flicker and turn away he tries to pass the thing off by taking a long drink which he makes considerable fuss over he is drawn back to lewis seeing lewis gaze still upon him he scowls cabness what you lookin at me for you want to know who i am well i'm ralph cabness lot of good is goin to do you well what you keep lookin for i'm ralph cabness ain't that enough for you want the whole family history it's none of your goddamn business anyway keep off me do you hear keep off me look at cora ain't she pretty enough to look at 
look at halsey or stella clover ought to be here and you could look at her and love her that's what you need i know lewis ralph cabinets gets satisfied that way cabinets satisfied say quit your kiddin here look at that old man there see him he's satisfied do i look like him when i'm dead i don't expect to be satisfied is that enough for you with your goddamn nosin or do you want more well you won't get it understand lewis the old man as symbol flesh and spirit of the past what do you think he would say if he could see you you look at him cabnus cabnus just like any done-up preacher is what he looks to me jam some false teeth in his mouth and crank him and you'd have god almighty spit in torrents all around the floor oh hell and he reminds me of that black cockroach over yonder and besides he ain't my past my ancestors were southern blue bloods lewis and black cabinets ain't much difference between blue and black lewis enough to draw a denial from you can't hold them can you master slave soil and the overarching heavens dusk dawn they fight and bastardize you the sun tint of your cheeks flame of the great season of multi-coloured leaves tarnished burn split shredded easily burned no use his gaze shifts to stella stella's face draws back her breasts come towards him stella i ain't got nothing for you mister tain't no use to look at me halsey you're a queer fellow lewis i swear ye are told you so didn't i girls just take him easy though and he'll be riding just the same as any georgia mule eh lewis laughs stella i'm going to tell you something mister it ain't to you to the mr lewis what knows is about it's to something different i don't know what that old man there maybe it's him is like my father used to look he used to sing and when he could sing and no mo they'd allus come for him and carry him to church and there he'd sit before the pulpit a swayin and a leadin every song a white man took my mother and it broke the old man's heart he died and then i didn't care what become of me and i don't know i don't care now don't get it in your head i'm some sentimental susie askin for yo sop now nah, sir but there's something to yo the others ain't got boars and kids and fools that's all i've known boars when their fever's up when their fever's up they come to me halsey asks me over when he's off the job cabness it'd be a sin to play with him he takes it out in talk halsey knows that he has trifled with her at odd things he has been inwardly penitent before her tasking him but now he wants to hurt her he turns to lewis halsey lewis i got a little liquor in me and that's true true's what i said true but the stuff just seems to wake me up and make my mind a man of me listen you know a lot queer as hell as you are and i want to ask you some questions they're too hot for them stella and cora and cabinet so we'll just excuse em a chap between ourselves turns to the others you all can't listen in on this twon't interest ye so just leave the table this gentleman and myself go long now cabinet gets up pompous in his robe grotesquely so and makes as if to go through a grand march with stella she shoves him off roughly and in a mood swings her body to the steps cabinet grabs cora and parades around passing the old man to whom he bows in mock curtsey he sweeps by the table snatches the liquor bottle and then he and cora sprawl on the mattresses she meets his weak approaches after the manner she thinks stella would use halsey contemptuously watches them until he is sure that they are settled halsey this ain't the sort of thing for me lewis when i got work upstairs now nah, sir you and me has got things to do wastin time on common low-down women say lewis look at her now stella ain't she a picture common wench now nah, she ain't lewis you know she ain't i'm only tryin to fool you i used to love that girl yes yeah, sir and sometimes when the moon is thick and i hear dogs up the valley barkin and some old woman fetches out her song and the wind seem like the lord made them fur to fetch and carry the smell of pine and cane 
and there ain't no big job on foot i sometimes get to thinking that i still do but i want to talk to you lewis queer as ye are you know lewis i went to school once yeah in augusta but it wasn't a regular school nah it was a pussy sunday school masquerading under a regular name some goody-goody teachers from the north had come down to teach the niggers if you was nearly white they like you if you was black they didn't but it wasn't that i was all right you see i couldn't stand a messin' and pawin over my business like i was a child so i cussed em out and left cabinets there ought to have cussed out the old duck over yonder and left he'd have been a better man to-day but as i was saying i couldn't stand their way so i left and came here and worked with my father and been here ever since he died i set in for myself and it's always been give me a good job and sure pay and i ain't far from being satisfied so far as satisfaction goes prejudice is everywheres about this country and a nigger ain't in much standin anywheres but when it comes to pottin round and doin nothin with nothin bigger n an axe handle to hold a fellow down like it was a while back before i got this job that beam ought to be but to-morrow mornin early's time enough for that as i was sayin i gets to thinkin play dumb naturally to white folks i gets to thinkin i used to subscribe to the literary digest and that helped along a bit but there weren't nothin i could sink my teeth into there's lots i want to ask you lewis been askin you to come around couldn't get you can't get in much to-night he glances at the others his mind fastens on cabness say tell me this what's on your mind to say on that feller there cabness name one queer bird ought to know another seems like to me liquor has released conflicts in cabness and set them flowing he pricks his ears intuitively feels that the talk is about him leaves cora and approaches the table his eyes are watery heavy with passion he stoops he is a ridiculous pathetic figure in his showy robe cabness talking about me i know i'm the topic of conversation everywhere there's talk about this town girls and fellers white folks as well and if it's me you're talking about guess i got a right to listen in what's sayin what's sam bout his royal guts the duke what's sayin eh halsey to lewis we'll take it up another time cabness no another time bout it now i'm here now and talkin's just begun i was born and bred in a family of orators that's what i was halsey preachers cabness nah preachers hell i didn't say wind busters yeah misapprehended me you understand what that means don't you all right then you misapprehended me i didn't say preachers i said orators orators born one and i'll die one you understand me lewis he turns to halsey and begins shaking his finger in his face and as for you you're all right for chopping things from blocks of wood i was good at that the day i ducked the cradle and since then i've been shaping words after a design that branded here know what's here my soul ever heard of that the hell you have been shaping words to fit my soul never told you that before did i thought i couldn't talk i'll tell you i've been shaping words out but sometimes they're beautiful and golden and have a taste that makes them fine to roll over with your tongue your tongue ain't fit for nothing but to roll and lick hog meat stella and cora come up to the table halsey give him a shove there will you stell stella jams cabness in a chair cabness springs up cabness can't keep a good man down those words i was telling you about they won't fit in the mould that's branded on my soul rhyme you see poet too bad rhyme bad poet something else you've learned to-night lewis don't know it all and i'm a-tellin you ugh the form that's burned into my soul is some twisted awful thing that crept in from a dream a goddamn nightmare and won't stay still unless i feed it and it lives on words not beautiful words god almighty no misshapen split-gut tortured twisted words layman was feedin it in back there that day you thought i ran out fearin things white folks feed it cause their looks are words niggers black niggers feed it cause they're evil and their looks are words yaller niggers feed it this whole damn bloated purple country feeds it cause it's goin down to hell in a holy avalanche of words i want to feed the soul i know what that is the preachers don't but i've got to feed it i wish to god some lynchin white man 
but stick his knife through it and pin it to a tree and pin it to a tree you hear me that's a wish for you you little snot-nosed pups who've been makin fun of me and fakin that i'm weak me ralph cabinet's weak ha halsey that's right old man there there ere so much exertion merits a fittin reward help him to be seated cora halsey gives him a swig of shine cora glides up seats him and then plumps herself down on his lap squeezing his head into her breasts cabinus mutters tries to break loose curses cora almost stifles him he goes limp and gives up cora toys with him ruffles his hair braids it parts it in the middle stella smiles contemptuously and then a sudden anger sweeps her she would like to lash cora from the place she'd like to take cabinets to some distant pine grove and nurse and mother him her eyes flash a quick tensioning throws her breasts and neck into a poised strain she starts towards them halsey grabs her arm and pulls her to him she struggles halsey pins her arms and kisses her she settles spurting like a pine knot of fire lewis finds himself completely cut out the glowing within him subsides it is followed by a dead chill cabinets carry stella halsey cora the old man the cellar and the workshop the southern town descend upon him their pain is too intense he cannot stand it he bolts from the table leaps up the stairs plunges through the workshop and out into the night six the cellar swims in a pale phosphorescence the table the chairs the figure of the old man are amoeba like shadows which move about and float in it in the corner under the steps close to the floor a solid blackness a sound comes from it a forcible yawn part of the blackness detaches itself so that it may be seen against the grayness of the wall it moves forward and then seems to be clothing itself in odd dangling bits of shadow the voice of halsey vibrant and deepened calls halsey cabinets cora stella he gets no response he wants to get them up to get on the job he is intolerant of their sleepiness halsey cabinets stella cora gutturals jerky and impeded tell that he is shaking them halsey come now up with you cabinets sleepily and still more or less intoxicated what's the big idea what in hell halsey work but never you mind about that up with you cora ooh, ooh. look here mister i ain't used to being thrown into the street before day stella any bunk what's worked is worth in wages more in this but come on tain't no use to argue cabinets i'll argue it's preposterous the girls interrupt him with none too pleasant laughs cabinets that's what i said know what it means don't you all right then i said it's preposterous to root an artist out of bed at this ungodly hour when there ain't no use to it you can start your damned old work nobody's stopping you but what we got to get up for afraid somebody'll see the girls leavin some sport you are i hand it to you halsey up you get all the same cabinets oh the hell you say halsey well son seeing that i'm the kind-hearted father i'll give you a chance to open your eyes but up you get when i come down he mounts the steps to the workshop and starts a fire in the hearth in the yard he finds some chunks of coal which he brings in and throws on the fire he puts a kettle on to boil the wagon draws him he lifts an oak beam fingers it and becomes abstracted then comes to himself and places the beam upon the workbench he looks over some newly cut wooden spokes he goes to the fire and pokes it the coals are red hot with a pair of long prongs he picks them up and places them in a thick iron bucket this he carries downstairs outside darkness has given way to the impalpable grayness of dawn this early morning light seeping through the four barred cellar windows is the color of the stony walls it seems to be an emanation from them halsey's coals throw out a rich warm glow he sets them on the floor a safe distance from the beds halsey no foolin now come up with you other than a soft rustling there is no sound as the girls slip into their clothes cabinets still lies in bed stella to halsey reckon you could spare us a light halsey strikes a match lights a cigarette and then bends over and touches flame 
to the two candles on the table between the beds cabinets ask for a cigarette halsey hands him his and takes a fresh one for himself the girls before the mirror are doing up their hair it is bushy hair that has gone through some straightening process character however has not all been ironed out as they kneel there heavy-eyed and dusky and throwing grotesque moving shadows on the wall they are two princesses in africa going through the early morning ablutions of their pagan prayers finished they come forward to stretch their hands and warm them over the glowing coals red dusk of a georgia sunset their heavy coal-lit faces cabinet suddenly recalls something cabinet the old man talked last night stella and so did you halsey in your dreams cabinet i tell you he did i know what i'm talking about i tell you what he said wait now let me see halsey look out brother the old man'll be getting into you by way of dreams come still ready cora coffee and eggs for both of you halsey goes upstairs stella gettin generous ain't he she blows the candles out says nothing to cabinet then she and cora follow after halsey cabinet left to himself tries to rise he has slept in his robe his robe trips him finally he manages to stand up he starts across the floor halfway to the old man he falls and lies quite still perhaps an hour passes light of a new sun is about to filter through the windows cabinet slowly rises to support upon his elbows he looks hard and internally gathers himself together the side face of father john is in the direct line of his eyes he scowls at him no one is around words gush from cabinet cabinet you sit there like a black hound spiked to an ivory pedestal and all night long i heard you murmuring that devilish word they thought i didn't hear you but i did mumblin feedin that ornery thing that's livin on my insides father john father of satan more likely what does it mean to you you're dead already death what does it mean to you to you who died way back there in the sixties what are you throwin it in my throat for what's it goin to get you a good smashin in the mouth that's what my fist'll sink into your black mush face clear to your guts if you got any don't believe you have never seen signs o' none death death sin and death all night long you mumble death he forgets the old man as his mind begins to play with the word and its associations death these clammy floors just like the place they used to stow away the worn-out no-count niggers in the days of slavery that was long ago not so long ago no windows he rises higher on his elbows to verify this assertion he looks around and seeing no one but the old man calls halsey halsey gone and left me just like a nigger i thought he was a nigger all the time now i know it ditch you when it comes right down to it damn him anyway god damn him he looks and re-sees the old man hey you to hell with you too what do i care whether you can see or hear you know what hell is cause you've been there it's a feelin and it's ragin in my soul in a way that'll pop out of me and run you through and scorch you and burn and rip your soul your soul ha nigger soul a gin soul that gets drunk on a preacher's words and screams and shouts god almighty how i hate that shoutin where's the beauty in that gives a buzzard a windpipe and i'll bet a dollar to a dime the buzzard a beat you to it ain't surprisin the white folks hate you so when you had eyes did you ever see the beauty of the world tell me that the hell you did now don't tell me i know you didn't you couldn't have oh i'm drunk and just as good as dead but no eyes that have seen beauty ever lose their sight you ain't got no sight if you had drunk as i am i hope christ will kill me if i couldn't see it your eyes are dull and watery like fish eyes fish eyes are dead eyes you're an old man a dead fish man and black at that they put you here to die damn fool you are not to know it do you know how many feet you're underground i'll tell you twenty and do you think you'll ever see the light of day again even if you wasn't blind do you think you're out of slavery huh you're where they used to throw the worked out no count slaves on a damp clammy floor of a dark scum hole and they call that an infirmary the sun's a why i can already see you toppled off that stool and stretched out on the floor beside me not beside me damn you by yourself with the flies buzzing and licking god knows what they'd find on a dirty black foul breath mouth like yours someone is coming down the stairs 
carry bringing food for the old man she is lovely in her fresh energy of the morning in the calm untested confidence and nascent maternity which rise from the purpose of her present mission she walks to within a few paces of cabinets carry k brother says come up now brother ralph cabinets brother doesn't know what he's talking about carry k yes he does ralph he needs you on the wagon cabinets he wants me on the wagon eh does he think some wooden thing can lift me up ask him that carry k he told me to help you cabinets and how would you help me child dear sweet little sister she moves forward as if to aid him carry k i'm not a child as i've more than once told you brother ralph and as i'll show you now cadmus wait carry no that's right you're not a child but twon't do to lift me bodily you don't understand but it's the soul of me that needs the rising carry k you're a bad brother and just won't listen to me when i'm telling you to go to church cadmus doesn't hear her he breaks down and talks to himself cadmus great god almighty a soul like mine can't pin itself onto a wagon wheel and satisfy itself in spinning round iron prongs and hickory sticks and god knows what all all right for halsey use him me i get my life down in this scum hole the old man in me carry k has he been talkin cabinets huh who him no don't need to i talk and when i really talk it pays the best of them to listen the old man is a good listener he's deaf but he's a good listener and i can talk to him tell him anything carry k he's deaf and blind but i reckon he hears and sees too from the things i've heard cabinets no can't can't i tell you how's he do it carry k dunno except i've heard that the souls of old folks have a way of seeing things cabinets and i've heard them call that superstition the old man begins to shake his head slowly carry and cabinets watch him anxiously he mumbles with a grave motion his head nods up and down and then on one of the down swings father john remarkably clear and with great conviction sin he repeats this word several times always the downward nodding surprised indignant cabinets forgets that carry is with him cabinets sin shut up what do you know about sin you old black bastard shut up and stop that swaying and nodding your head father john sin cabinets tries to get up cabinets didn't i tell you to shut up carry steps forward to help him cabinets is violently shocked at her touch he springs back cabinets carry what how baby you shouldn't be down here ralph says things doesn't mean to but carry he doesn't know what he's talking about couldn't know it was only a preacher's sin they knew in those old days and that wasn't sin at all mind me the only sin is what's done against the soul the whole world is a conspiracy to sin especially in america and against me i'm the victim of their sin i'm what sin is does he look like me have you ever heard him say the things you've heard me say he couldn't if he had the holy ghost help him don't look shocked little sweetheart you hurt me father john sin cadmus ah oh, shut up old man carry k leave him be he wants to say something she turns to the old man what is it father cadmus what you talkin to that old deaf man for come away from him carry k what is it father the old man's lips begin to work words are formed incoherently finally he manages to articulate father john the sin what's fixed hesitates carry k restraining a comment from cadmus go on father father john upon the white folks cadmus suppose you're talking about that bastard race that's roaming round the country it looks like sin if that's what you mean gives us something new and up to date father john for tellin jesus lies oh the sin the white folks mitted when they made the bible lie boom 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 thuds on the floor above the old man sinks back into his stony silence carry his wet-eyed cabness contemptuous cabness so that's your sin all these years to tell us that the white folks made the bible lie well i'll be damned lewis ought to have been here you old black faker carry k brother ralph is that your best amen she turns him to her and takes his hot cheeks in her firm cool hands her palms draw the fever out with its passing cabinets crumples he sinks to his knees before her ashamed exhausted his eyes squeezed tight carry presses his face tenderly against her the suffocation of her fresh starched dress 
feels good to him carrie is about to lift her hands in prayer when halsey at the head of the stairs calls down halsey well well what's up ain't you ever comin come on what's up down there take you all mornin to sleep off a pint you're a weakenin man you're weakenin the axle and the beam's already waitin for you come on cabness rises and is going doggedly towards the steps carrie notices his robe she catches up to him points to it and helps him take it off he hangs it with an exaggerated ceremony on its nail in the corner he looks down on the tousled beds his lips curl bitterly turning he stumbles over the bucket of dead coals he savagely jerks it from the floor and then seeing carrie's eyes upon him he swings the pail carelessly and with eyes downcast and swollen trudges upstairs to the workshop carrie's gaze follows him till he's gone then she goes to the old man and slips to her knees before him her lips murmur jesus come light streaks through the iron barred cellar window within its soft circle the figures of carrie and father john outside the sun arises from its cradle in the tree-tops of the forest shadows of pines are dreams the sun shakes from its eyes the sun arises gold glowing child it steps into the sky and sends a birth song slanting down gray dust streets and sleepy windows of the southern town the end end of section thirty end of cane by gene tumor